All right, it went live. Good, I was gonna say good morning. Good afternoon, good evening, depending on where y'all at in the world. It is us, McCoy, Melanated Council and Gang. We are here again with another live stream today. Ask that you guys like, subscribe, enjoy the show. We stream Tuesdays, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, or wherever you're going to be watching us from. We just ask that you just pretty much keep it chill, cool, calm, and collective. And, and again, as a note, if you come in here and you start talking crazy, you will get banned. I don't care. I have zero patience, zero tolerance. Because, yeah, <laughs> as what Toby did, we ain't, doing <laughs> we ain't doing that today. We are not. Anyways, we got a fun topic for you guys tonight fun topic. It's called Faces of Black Success. And, and basically what we're going to do is we're going to have this virtual roundtable discussion and we're going to talk about how people in, in the black community have used their success to go help and empower their local community or somewhere else and, and give others an opportunity to succeed and, and do that with it. We're going to, I got a clip of Chadwick Boseman in his speech when he um, was basically thanking Denzel Washington for what he did. So we're going to look at that, going to talk about that. And then we're going to just talk about other people who have become successful, turned around, um, went back and brought somebody along and said, you know, hey, this is what I've done to get here. I'm showing you how to do it. It's on you, blah, blah, blah. And so, chat, you guys are always welcome to say something, drop a like, say hi. You know, if, if there's somebody that we didn't mention, go for it. And we're going to just, just, just keep this train moving, okay? All right. All right. All right. So, faces of black success. What does that mean to you guys? And what does that look like to you guys? I feel like when you first think about it, you're thinking of who's the absolute richest. Mm -hmm. Like we compare wealth to success. So you may think Oprah Winfrey and um, just any like billionaire, black person, athlete, you know, like LeBron James or Jay-Z, Beyonce sort of thing. Um, so, I mean, that's pretty much my answer. That's kind of who I think about mm -hmm. or, you know, what's a common answer, I'd say. Right, right. Uh, I'll, I'll go. Unless, Toby, you want to go? You wanna, you wanna... Yeah, I can go. Yeah, go for it. So, yeah, like, I guess you kind of feel like famous people. That's kind of one of the first things. Are yeah. Who are the people who have made it really big, especially people who've come from not a lot, you know, you may not have come from the deepest part of the hood, but you may have just come from a very humble background. So a lot of times you look and you see those people like, yes, that's someone, right, who really popped off and became big. You think of the artists, you think of rappers, you think of athletes, you think of, um, and maybe now you can think of some business people or people who've like, you know, they've not only have they done things in music and sort of the other fields, but they've become entrepreneurs, especially the people who've made it all the way to the top to like the billion dollar mark. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of these people that are really influential and you think about them as being successful. Um, and I mean, now, like, I kind of also see people even just that aren't famous, but that I know personally who have, have you know, especially cause like I'm 25 and I was not, I was in school not too long ago. Um, I mean, all of us are, you know, we're all pretty young, but like really, really less than two years ago was still in school. And so I think of a lot of these people who um, just graduated and people who are starting new jobs. And it's like, man, this is success. Like the black people that I know. So I think too, also mm -hmm. like sort of locally um, in my own group. Um, and you get to see a lot of people who are like the first, uh, maybe the first, or like people who break barriers. Um, like I know the Rhodes Scholarship, that's like super prestigious um, scholarship to go to like, I think Oxford. And 
at my undergrad, the first person who became a Rhodes Scholar was actually someone who just graduated in 2018. Um, and she's black, um, yes. black African. So that was like huge for my university. The first person in our history to get the Rhodes Scholarship. And she was but I was like literally a few weeks ago that got the Rhodes Scholarship and he's a black guy. So I think sometimes it's from my from uh, my alma mater. So it's just crazy that it's like, wait, like you just see all these people being super successful and they're not famous, but there are people who I could look at that and just say that's super encouraging, super mm -hmm. inspiring. And that will set an example for other people that know them and people that they know. Right, right. Sure you're right. Sure you're right. And, and I'm pretty much going to mimic what both you guys said. It, it, it's those people who, that we typically think and engage as successful. You know, we, we say LeBron James, Michael Jordan. Some people will say, well, Floyd Mayweather. Oh. Uh, we could we could go and be like, um, oh, Roy Jones in the boxing, you know, he's successful. Uh, who else? George Foreman, Muhammad Ali. Oh, uh, we and then we go to the, a different sector. We were like Oprah Winfrey. We oh. will go with um, Steve Harvey. You know, talk shows. I mean, people that that we don't think as, as successful in, in a one way or another, but they've done something. They then they crafted something for such a long time that is worth noting. That a it took a lot of guts. It took a, a lot of tears and in, in, in pain, but here they are. They're out, They're at a spot where they're able to say, you know, I, I've made it. But at the same time, I want to share my success with the people who stood behind me the most, who were there for me, and, and to be able to give them an opportunity not only to be where I'm at, but to shine in their own light and do something for somebody else, you know? And, and I think that is huge. And, you know, we don't really see that as much anymore, but I, I think that the the one thing that Ty Perry has always said, and it rings true, and not just Ty Perry, but everybody else, is, is like, give people their flowers while they're still living. Mm -hmm. just, do, just due to the fact mm -hmm. that they've come such a long way. And rather than honor them while they're dead, we should honor them while they're still living and, and let them know and remind them and remind ourselves that they've played an important role in our lives, you know? Mm -hmm. And and as I'm thinking about this, the, the clip that, that I want to show and share, so, uh, you know, just want to let people know, like, you know, this is something that we should expect to see. And, and especially now where a lot of things are going haywire, we just need to remind people that, you know, hey, listen, even though, yes, things are going crazy and everything else, but here's something to look forward to. And once you get to a certain prestige or, or a, certain, a certain point in your career, look back thank the people that helped you to get there, but also at the same time, make sure you do the same thing for somebody else. So I'm going to share, mm -hmm. share screen. Share audio. Okay. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, I know. Boom. Here we go. You guys see it? Everybody see it? Yeah, Chadwick Boseman tribute to Denzel Washington. Yes. Yeah. All right, here we go. Can you pull screen? Oh, yeah. Damn. Come on, pull screen. I know personally that your generosity extends past what you have given on the stage and screen. Many of you already know the story that Mr. Washington, when asked by Felicia Rashad, to join her in assisting nine theater students from Howard University who had been accepted to a summer acting program at the British Academy of Dramatic Acting in Oxford. He gracefully and privately agreed to contribute. As fate would have it, I was one of the students that he paid for. Man, Spike Lee, look at Smug. That your tuition for that summer 
was paid for and that your benefactor was none other than the dopest actor on the planet. Come on. I have no doubt that there are similar stories in boys and girls clubs and theaters and churches across the country where I know you have also inspired and motivated others. An offering from a sage and a king is more than silver and gold. It is a seed of hope, a bud of faith. There is no Black Panther without Denzel Washington. And, 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 and not just because of me, but my whole cast, that generation, stands on your shoulders. The daily battles won, the thousand territories gained, the many sacrifices you made for the culture on film sets through your career, the things you refused to compromise along the way, laid the blueprints for us to follow. And so now, let he who has watered be watered. Let he who has given be given to. It is an honor to now know you, to learn from you and join in this work with you. May God bless you exceedingly and abundantly more in what's in store than he ever has before. God bless you. And in, in, in that moment, you know, that is so powerful be, because, again, he's absolutely right. Chadwick Boseman, rest in peace. You know, he hit the head on the nail perfectly. He said, you know, there wouldn't be me. There wouldn't be a Black Panther. There wouldn't be a, a, a Killmonger. There wouldn't be any of these people that was in Black Panther, that was in, in, in all these movies if it had not been for um, Denzel Washington and Felicia Rashard and those heavy hitters in, in, in Hollywood that paved the way for them to be able to do stuff like that. Mm -hmm. and, and to be able to have like a, a totally all black cast in major roles, you know, still it, it's unheard of, but it happened. And it just goes to show that even even though yes, Denzel Washington, he's successful in his own right, but to be able to turn around and, and help other individuals who inspire to be actors, actresses, athletes, whatever the case may be, to be able to do something positive with their life and showcase it, that's key. That's powerful. We got a mirror, yes. You know that that speech in itself was was whoo was fire, Beautiful. but man, but man, you know, sorry to see him go so soon, so young. But still, he but even still, he still left the legacy. Mm -hmm. He still left the legacy. So it's mm -hmm. like, yeah, yeah. So there we go. We got we got our, our one example now. So, um, go for it. When you were saying, like, you know, he still left a legacy, would you say that success is leaving a legacy? Would that be the definition of success or one of the aspects of success? I think it would be, I would look at it like this, my opinion. Hmm. I, I look at it as, a, as an aspect because I don't know too many successful anythings or anyone's who've been around and didn't leave some kind of legacy. I don't think that in order for you, or not in order for you, I don't believe that by the time you get to a certain peak that you don't leave a mark. Right. Because when you get somewhere, you leave some type of mark, whether it's good or bad. Mm -hmm. But at the same token, you leave a mark, you leave an imprint on there that when you're dead and gone, people can say, I remember when, when Tupac did this and he made this song at this time and the way how I was feeling, I could have put it in words, but he put it in, in, in such poetry that it made sense and I vibe to it. You mm -hmm. know, we, we can look at, um, I, I remember 
when what well, we could say Maya Angelou, you know, she she coined this phrase and put it in the book. And I'm browsing in the bookstore, the library, trying to figure out what I'm going to do. And I see this book and I read it. And she captures the very essence of what I'm going through, my struggles. And especially when I'm contemplating committing suicide right then and there. But her book inspired me to do something more than what I ever envisioned. You know, boom, you got there. You got... Mm -hmm. Uh, President Manny, he got this one. I was going to say this one. You you got Barack Obama, who became the, the first black president of the United States. And many people on both sides were like, oh, no, it would never happen. It would never happen. But yet he did it and inspired mm -hmm. millions upon millions of boys and girls, men and women all over to be like, you know, if we could have a black president in our lifetime and be able to see it then surely we, we can have black judges, black sheriffs. We can have um, black congressmen and women, black senators, black governors, you know, and to be able to, to say that's a legacy in its own right, you know? And even still, you know, he's still leaving a mark, mm -hmm. still leaving a mark. And, and then people could just say, you know, to bring it home, you know, we could say, we could throw Andrew Yang in there. It'd be like his legacy as of right now, what he's done in the, the, the small amount of time, he's going to be remembered right. for years to come. You know, he's inspired millions to think a little bit harder about their current situation. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and again, when we think about a legacy and, and how it intertwines with success, am I thinking? That's an aspect. That's an aspect. And, and I'm leaving it at that. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, Toby. Take a whack at it. Yeah. Um, actually, I, I was looking at President Manny's comment, too. Um, so he was the first African American governor. I mean, wow. I didn't know. It's actually at some point, I didn't even know if we had any <laughs> in the country. Um, but obviously, I live in Massachusetts. I know who Deval Patrick is, and he also mm -hmm. ran for president. But um, that is interesting. Like people will see that, and it's like a doorway. It's like almost like permission is being granted for more people right. to come through, right? Yeah. I mean, surely, Shirley Chisholm, really, like, mm -hmm. like with her run. Yeah. Oh my goodness! Like so, like for her, right? That I think your question, I was like is a pretty good one because like is having success having legacy part of success or is that the definition of success for her she wasn't successful in her first goal right, right. In getting the presidency but she became the first woman the black woman in congress um and i mean she everyone honors her all the time i think her birthday just passed like just passed very recently and people always honor her and put her up and that is success, right? That that she has that legacy, and that is part of the success, right? I mean, like you said, Ronald with Yang, he isn't as successful in his sort of main goal, but um, things are being pushed, right? From the nine months now that yeah. actually ten months that he has been since he dropped out. So a lot of times it is having that that legacy of sort of inspiration and being able to mm -hmm. advance some kind of goal, maybe that's bigger than you. And that's part yeah. of success. Um, so yeah, since we're talking about like historical figures and everything, I, I think that those people fit in pretty well. Um, I mean, Martin Luther King, I mean, powerhouse. And yeah. he was unfortunately assassinated before he could sort of see the realization of yeah. his dream. But like, there's no telling that he left an enormous legacy. And I mean, yeah. he was like, he was pretty successful in pushing things, getting the Civil Rights Act and all these things to pass. Um, but it was one of those things where he was taken before he could see it all and very successful, I would say. Um, yeah, yeah. So I would say, that, yeah, the legacy of kind of what you're able to do and who you're able to inspire and the change you're able to make is part of the success. And um, even if like you didn't succeed, quote unquote, in the first school, <laughs> true, true, so true. I mean, I know growing up, 
and especially in Grand Rapids, Michigan, just to kind of give people context. Growing up in Grand Rapids, like I wasn't in like the best neighborhood, but I wasn't always, but I wasn't in the worst neighborhood. And so when we hear people, you know, go, going out and making big and whatnot, we're like, okay, like it'll, it'll probably never happen. It'll never happen. You know, there, there's a guy out in Grand Rapids name. He goes by the name of Willie the Kid. You know, probably like arguably one of the most underrated rappers in Grand Rapids to come out and to actually kind of like get big, mm -hmm. you know, in a way. A lot of people say, well, he's not successful, but we're like a lot of people that's not from Grand Rapids and, and from Michigan. Like, well, he's not successful. He didn't sell millions. Like, no, but he inspired hundreds of thousands to be like, if Willie the Kid could do it in the, the word play, the style that he has is unmatched and unrivaled by, by anybody in the game now. Like, yeah, if he could do it, go for it. Do that, you know? Mm -hmm. And even still, even in his own right, you know, a, a lot of rappers from Michigan, they're not necessarily mainstream. They're more so independent. And you wouldn't you wouldn't hear them or know about them unless you know somebody that's from Michigan that listens to that that style of music or even in, in Chicago or even in Indiana, Ohio, you know, that that area where a lot of people travel up just just to listen to us like, yeah, they, they may not be, quote unquote, successful, but they inspired people to come out and be like, you know, if he could do it, I could do it too. And even if I even if I don't blow up, but still, you know, if I blow up in my own community, that's a win. That's mm -hmm. a win. If 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 I could show people that there's a different way and, and, and give them an outlet to express their pain, their anger, and their frustrations about what's going on in the hood, boom, there we go. We've done it. You know, and, and let them and let folks know, like, you know, there's a different way of handling things, there's a different way of going about things. And let's do things to help build up our community versus tear it down and, you know, leave it where it's at. Right. And when it, when it comes to, like, building up your community, we also have to know what that looks like. Yes. Some people feel that, you know, rap music is tearing down the community it's bad it's negative it's wrong when that's not necessarily the case because like what ronald just said willie the kid inspired hundreds of thousands of people you know in in grand rapids to, mm -hmm. you know, to rap make music and find an outlet and yeah. that's a, and that's a different form of success you know that's you know, sometimes just finding some sort of outlet Yes. Some place to just go and speak your mind, to talk, you know, just because it's not as pretty as poetry doesn't mean it's not mm. therapeutic, that it's not, you know, just as as art, art as artful, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. I think that's a, that's a big one, too, is like the grittiness, right, of some of the, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that I have to really learn and look back when it comes to the history of rap and hip hop, just cause I didn't grow up with a lot of that, but mm -hmm. there, that is an art form, right? Some people say rhythm and poetry is like uh, a sort of little acronym that you can, yeah. you can put, you can put in. Um, so it, it is a, poet, a type of poetry. It's just a lot grittier, a lot more explicit than a lot of times mm -hmm. and very descriptive, right? It's a lot of storytelling. Mm -hmm. And some people don't like the stories that are being told, but like that's the reality for a lot of people. Exactly. Um, right. So that is, I would say, to like the success, even though you might have like a sort of, I don't know, clutching of the pearls is the right term, but there might be like some like, oh gosh, this is not wholesome, but that kind of stuff was needed to tell certain stories oh, yeah. and give some kind of outlet. Um, and I think like you could also talk about dance, like mm -hmm. break dancing and Oh and yeah, certain things that were born of the street, um, things that were just like so emblematic of the '80s, the '70s, and I mean, a lot of the stuff might not look like it might be not understood by a lot of people outside of these communities, 
but they know what it is. And a lot of those people, I actually just saw an article about, um, it literally was that breakdancing is gonna be an Olympic sport um, in 2024. So they basically took, I guess they're trying to have like the people who are the OGs of breakdancing, break in, I should say. Yeah. And they're gonna mm-hmm. actually have them consult with the Olympic judges so that you can sort of properly represent what that right. is. And I think that's a huge success for them because that lets their platform be put up on the national stage, on the international stage. Yes. And I mean, that's such a, like a urban, you know, just like, like that is like, I think that's a really big, there are some people who are questionable about it and they were like, you know, is this gonna be a proper representation of culture and in in the dancing? But I think a lot of people are super psyched that we are kind of becoming, cause I mean, it's one of those things that people think has gone away, but breakdancing, yeah. I remember when I was in college, there was like a breakdancing club and it was something that people do. People go to shows, people go to like ciphers and all that, but like, yeah. it's one of those things you might not know still is happening. So that's a big success. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And yeah. I mean, look at the thing that Stacy had just, Amy Stacy had just yeah, no, like Breaking is still a huge thing. Like, so I was in a hip hop club in college and we had to learn mm-hmm. like, you know, the four elements of hip hop, which is breaking graffiti, MCing and DJing. Mm. And so you get their own producing, but producing kind of goes with DJing. But, um, mm-hmm. And there was a huge, mm-hmm. massive breaking group, you know, a lot of people from just different backgrounds breaking. And it was just, it was just really cool. Nice. So, yeah. And I still see them on Instagram still breaking. So they, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. That's super cool. Yeah. yeah. I feel you. I know my cousin, he lives out in, in Cali, but when he was in, um, mm-hmm. he was living out here in Michigan, you know, he would do that. And he was good at it, like, good, good, you know? And, and so every now and then, he's like, hey, cuz, oh, he's like, I got a video that I made. The link, I watch it, I'm like, I'm not no dancer, but bruh, that's good, you know? Like, keep it up, like, that's his craft. He, he does that, like, he, he'll just, one day be chilling out and then he'll be out just breaking and doing all of this and I'm like ah, I can't do all of that but bro you go ahead and you do your thing like I support you you do that you know and I kind of had a six step like on the floor this is like the normal like break dancing like to go like in a circle <laughs> you said you, you said you know how to break the six step yeah if I could still remember Let's go. <laughs> yeah. So go, 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 breaking go. is fun though. Like it's such a it's like it's such a good workout. <clears throat> I believe it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Bunch of cardio going on. Yeah. Mm. And yeah. Like balance. Yes. The human body, what it can do. I was like, oh wow, this is different. I didn't know yeah, it right? like this. Um yeah. So the breaking club I did was you know, it was like actively we were break dancing. I didn't perform. I wasn't about it. I was not about that. But uh, the people who were leaders in the club, they like would do little performances on campus. Mm-hmm. And I think sometimes there were actually ciphers on the weekend where people from all over the state of Maryland, maybe even outside of the state, would come um, and do a little thing. So that that is a fun talk. We we're gonna have to talk more about all this um, when it comes to the dance and how like you know. Black community and dance and yeah. I was all gonna that say um, when it comes to dancing was you know dance hall dancing and you know Jamaican culture. Um, you know that's like a form of just you know freedom of expression, especially for women. You know it's just like a freedom of liberation of body of you know of celebration. Mm. Which you know of course when you look at it, it's just like are they just having sex on the dance floor? But like no, it's a. You know, <laughs> it's like a I guess it's, you know it's like when you learn about it, it's actually a pretty beautiful thing. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I'm, I'm gonna need to look into like, like, I, like look. I really need to learn more about that because that is like a, that would be a really fascinating thing to learn about, like how some of these things were born. I know there's a lot of sort of variations of like different dances from the continent on Africa, but mm-hmm. like I really never knew how some of these dances really came about. So, ooh, that's exciting. Um, I would nerd out just just like watching th- and reading about mm-hmm. about that yes that's true that is so true and and um 
Amy, Stacy, President Manny, you guys are bringing up some excellent points. Mm -hmm. Continue to share. And if anybody else is that's watching, you know, don't hesitate to share. Don't think that by you sharing, you you don't add value to the the topic. On the contrary, you do. And we we're the type of people where we're gonna blow it up. And if it's something that um we could spin around and, and talk about it and hash it out and, and just have that back and forth conversation. Do that. You mm -hmm. know, you, you are open to share what you want, how you want, but make sure at the same time that, you know, it's nothing disrespectful, nothing grimy and nothing weird, you know, other than that, you're good. You're fine. So let right. your voice be heard, you know? So while, while Chad is getting ready to do his thing, y'all going, I know y'all are taking your time. We're going to flip some things around because I know we talked about the rap culture and, and how, you know, it kind of like branched out into some different things. Let's talk about how um, the rap culture has kind of like gotten political over the years, you okay. know, and, and especially with what's been going on this year in particular. So a lot of people, if you guys haven't really been paying attention, you know, Killer Mike, he's a... Atlanta-based rap, rapper, hip-hop artist that that's been pretty much pro-black, pro pro-black, and at one point in time he endorsed Bernie Sanders, I think, or yeah. at least or, or at least said that he showed his support. Yeah, and so this past this past election cycle, he's been pretty much been out front especially in Atlanta, telling the protesters, you know, hey, let, let's, you know, put our frustrations into good use. Let, let's come together. Let's mobilize. Let's make a plan and let's attack. In that aspect, do you think that in itself could be another um, successful um, or another type of success of being able to kind of like mobilize people in your community to do, to do something positive? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, Killer Mike was always an activist, I believe, like even in high school and, and things like that. He was always, you know, trying to, you know, get his community up and, you know, trying to, I, I think like get out to vote if, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. But I know like since high school, he's always been, you know, into the community and, and, and doing activi activism. So for him to, you know, become, you know, a famous rapper, um, successful, and to be essentially still himself and to be able to promote and push so many, especially young people, I think I think that's great. Yes. To me, he's not as like, you know, a, a sellout or... He to me he had he I don't think he's really changed. Yeah. Like I'll be honest, and I, I still don't know why the fuck I haven't listened to his music yet. It's not I, I, I only know him as like the activist, which is hilarious. Oh man. <laughs> That's all yeah. I know. You yeah, it's yeah. just like, you know, this man name, you know, his, he just comes up on the screen and you know his mm -hmm. interview is it says Killer Mike. I'm like, okay. Okay, Killer Mike, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I know this man. <laughs> Listen, the, the one way how, how I, I got to know Killer Mike was when he did a collab with Outkast. It's called The Whole World. Ooh. Yes. Matter of fact, let me find that. Be, be, because... It's not, the, it's not the, in the whole world. world. Really? Well, yes, he was in that one. Oh, my God. <laughs> so I guess I have to... Um, he did the, the second verse. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, because uh, Andre 3000, he did the first one. Mm -hmm. Some of the chorus. Killer Mike came. He was pretty much like a um, like an announcer. He had the, like, the drop-down microphone. He was spitting at it and everything else. Mm -hmm. Hey, my homegirl, Rika. What's up? What's up? Hello. Hello. Look at that. Oh, oh thank got, you. You just got it. Yeah. Uh -huh. You just That's made long. my day. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, man. Uh, what well, I was going to say, she messed me up. <laughs> 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 but no, yes. 
Yes, Killer Mike. He he's in the um. He he's <laughs> he's in the whole world. He's a, he has that second. He has he has Thank that you. second verse, and and I'm like when I heard him speak, I'm like when I heard him rap, I'm like oh like he's good. Okay, he's good. And then I heard him do like some other stuff. Morris Brown. Oh, Morris Brown. Yes, that's mm. the um. Uh, uh, you can't see the whole around, but when it does, you just don't know. Hard is like a marching band. I'm a fan in the stands. Yes, I am. And I'm hollering, hey, baby. Say, hey, baby. Oh, okay. I'm cast. Yes. <laughs> I don't lost my glasses. I don't even care anymore. Yeah. <laughs> oh, snap. Yes, this is a different, this is a different I person. I don't care. This no, is the real Ronald. What happens to Ronald? <laughs> Listen, this is what happens with when Ronald. Super Ronald? Like, <laughs> Tra -la -la. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> My alter ego. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get it. I mean, all yeah. our faces are naked now. I feel weird. <laughs> Uh, I'll be blind yeah. though. Like I would actually not be able to see anything without. The, yes. Um. <laughs> I'm weak. Oh man. I'm this weak. Is what we do. We have fun. We laugh. We joke. Yeah. We it's all good. Joke. But yes. Um. That one, Morris Brown. That that one in itself it uplifted the HBCU. You know. Mm. And, and I think like the actual band was in the was in the um the video. Okay. And if y'all didn't catch that one, yes. Oh, uh, you need to stop. <laughs> you need to stop. This is this is your friend. Uh, this is the home girl. This yeah. Is your friend Ronald. Yes, from 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 Twitch. Aww. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes, from Twitch. And so. Aww. We be oh, pretty much you like, you know, I want to come see him. Like, come on, I'm gonna drop the link. I want you to win oh, that. Nice. Yes. Yeah, so so my Twitch community, I love y'all. If y'all don't, if if y'all need to know who I am, I'm GR King88. You can put a, a name with a face. That's me. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take your for it. I'm like, like, oh yeah, I've seen no, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I'm weak. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. My water almost gone, as you can tell. I'm good though. I'm good. Your breath. I'm weak. <laughs> I'm good. But no. But no. But no. Let's let's keep this let's keep this topic spinning. Right. For sure. Because. I, go ahead, Toby. No, I was saying like, saying that. Um. Actually, you you continue. You continue. Uh, let me let me hear you out what you're saying, and I'll jump in. And, and I was gonna say because I know that um, as far as in the political realm, like Killer Mike, he he's all like like L said, Killer Mike, he's always been active. He's he's mm -hmm. always pushing the people in the Atlanta. You know, don't sit on your vote. You go out and you go vote. You go and you let your voice be heard, but do it in a way where it's positive, where it's constructive, and that you. Do what you need to do, and so he's used his platform. He's been built up his platform over the years, and he's using that to empower a next generation, or another generation, to go ahead and follow in his footsteps. You know, and and be able to capitalize on what he started, and hopefully somebody carries a torch after he's gone. And, and I think in itself, that's a, a huge legacy too, as well. You know. And since, since we're still kind of being in that same area, I think about T.I., you know, in mm -hmm. and, and his hip hop school that he has going on down there, where he not only does he curates the, the um, those people that are becoming rappers, but he also gives him he also gives them the business aspect of the music industry and lets them mm -hmm. know, you know, That's if important. you 
if if you want to go into this music industry, you got to know it's more than, than just rapping. You got to know how to make the right deals, how to turn down deals, how mm-hmm. to you know, make sure you get the most money and do this and do that and, and be able to set yourself up for success. And and even then, he he shares his grind of how he came to be over the years. You know, and I think that's a huge plus, a huge plus. I mean, sheesh, you look at Ludacris, you know, he came out first CD, you know, it was a banger. You know, my brother had it. We listened to it like 24 seven, like it never stopped playing, never stopped. And then here you go. You see him being an actor like what? (laughs) Like, no. Then he he's doing more movies. I'm like, what? Like, okay. Like, cool. You know, it's so, it's so I, I think that part in itself, and especially with his daughters too, like he's letting them know, like, you know, you can grow up to be whatever you want to be, as long as you put your mind to it, put your heart into it, and just stay true to you, you can do what you want to do, you know, and, and, and just have fun with it. Oh man, who who else do you guys think will, will, will kind of fit that bill? So, some people like there's less coverage, but it kind of also blew up. Like Twenty One Savage, who was not necessarily the go to person that you think of like activist and you know community yeah. inspiration, but then uh, like from what I heard, he had been like really active early yeah. last year, I think, shortly before he was arrested by ice. So that was a whole thing wow. that blew up. And that people Isn't were like theorizing. Right? Hmm? Isn't he like from the UK? Yeah, so apparently he was from the UK or from an island that might have been colonized by the UK. I don't know exactly what the exact details, but he basically was not American. Or at least he wasn't. Um, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> there you uh, go. All right, Rick, I'm going to need you to calm down now. Yes. <laughs> So with um, 21, 21, he, I mean, he was doing stuff to, I guess, trying to inspire. I have to look into, look into the specific activism he was doing, but it was like pretty positive and uplifting. And even like some of his songs that were more recent, like um, a lot, like you see the music video and kind of like the story he was telling of people who were at this like nice table, but they had been in some really bad situation in the past, they're all black. So I like that, like I like the storytelling and some of what he was doing. Um, and then you know he, he was arrested by ICE, and people were saying maybe part of the reason was that he was a little too critical of the U.S. and some other stuff. I don't know. Um, you, could, you might not put it past the government to do something like that. But um, so Twenty One Savage was there also in Atlanta. You have um, other musicians and I guess artists like, of course, Nip. You can't you can't not talk about yes, Nip, yes, mm, yeah, yes. Sure. and I mean. I wasn't even really at hip to him and what he had done. Like, I just, there was a lot that I sort of hadn't been as hip to, but like, it was just clear from all the outpouring and just seeing like the marathon store and all these things. It was like, wow, this is way beyond hip hop. This is way beyond, you know, music. And this is really like a movement that he was building. And that is like a huge legacy right there. Like for him and his family, I mean, his family are going to be taken care of. Like, I remember when people were trying to send donations, the family was like, all the stuff that Nip has been doing was to make sure that we would be cared for even after he died, even though they didn't expect it to be so soon. Mm-hmm. So I guess for some of the modern day, you have people like them, um, LeBron James with the promise school, like his success yeah. personally in the NBA is great. But then mm-hmm. that is really, I think the, the real maker of what are you doing to leave a legacy? Having kids uplifted. Um, I, what was the, the town again i know akron akron, akron there you go yeah. akron, I, knew it was, I knew it was ohio but I was like, okay yeah. akron so that's just like just beautiful like being able to like show what happens when kids are taken care of and have the resources and then their education their, their scores improve and their just quality of life improves yeah. so that's really the i think the real component to it like everyone can be successful everyone can make the money what are you doing to give back like tyler perry you know he yeah. has a studio that he was leasing out and trying to help like more people come up and become, um, I guess, get into the industry. And so that's really that's really what 
what has to happen, I feel like. Um, yeah. So looking at some I of the believe, chat. I believe yeah. his studio is um, a former Confederate like, battle like station, like a base. Mm. Wow. That's, that's what I, I think that's what he said. And it's the biggest studio in the country. Wow. Yeah. Nice. All right, Tyler Perry, go for it. Yes, that's awesome. Oh, that is awesome. You know, and like hearing all these stories is is, is like, man, it, it really does like pump people up to, to kind of get out there and and do what you gotta do, you, you know, and it be the best you that you could ever be, you know. And, and, and again. You know, you're gonna fall. We all are. We're not perfect. We're not robots. You know, we're gonna break down. We're gonna have our good days. We're gonna have our bad days. But at the same time, <clears throat> if we use our good days to help promote and promote and help promote and push the ideas of what we want to leave behind us, that's big. That's huge. That that in itself will take care of itself. And then as you get up there in in age and time, that legacy, it follows you. The the lives that you touch, whether it, it's a whole community or just one person, they're going to remember that for their lifetime, you know? And, and my kids, I, I tell my kids all the time, I'm like, yes, I got kids. I, I tell my kids all the time that... <clears throat> In order for you to do what you want to do in life, I don't care what you do, but as long as it's something positive and you're not getting thrown in jail for some stupid stuff, because I'm going to beat you up myself. Like, I don't care. But <laughs> if you want to go and be a veterinarian or a teacher, or you want to build the, the first working Gundam or if you want to go to the NBA, the NFL, or, or be a dancer or actor, actress, like I don't care what you want to do, but if you do it, what's going on, manager Juan? Hey. hey. Donald. Yes, Toby McGuire, you in there. We out here. <laughs> <Yeah>. And <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes, and and like and I tell them, like you know, whatever you do in life, make it count because yes. Later. Yeah. be pumpkin spice later. It <laughs> <laughs> is so. Latte, here we go. All right, we, yeah. got we got you. We got you. We got you. <laughs> it was Latte. We got you, man. Yeah, we got yeah. You. We're just messing Thank with you. you. Coming in. But, but still, like, you know, you leave your mark. You know, like me and your mom, we're we not going to be here all the time. And now I thought the pepper. Oh, y'all about to make me. Y'all about to make me go and get some hot chocolate now. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, yeah. It's late. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's that it's the it's that weather this time of year. I mean, yeah, for yeah, Florida, yeah. Finally, it's yeah. it was actually cold. It was what is it, sixty two? That's mm. cold for us. Yeah, yeah. I know, three got the streak, streak, <laughs> three week streak. I like it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Twitch, okay, Twitch. Yeah, Twitch is in the house. Yay! Yeah, but still, you know, um, what I was going to say. Oh, I was tell like you know, be the best, be the best at what you're gonna be. I don't care what you do, y'all be the best, and and do what you want to do, and okay. make sure you leave your mark on this world. So when people look back and they read about what you've done, they say, "I don't know him, but he inspired me to do whatever," you know, or she inspired me to do whatever, and you do that, you know, and, and I think. That in itself will, will leave a legacy, not only just for from for me, but just for my just for our whole family, really. So, yeah, that that's awesome. 
That is awesome. Oh man, we could talk about uh, faces uh, of black success all day long. I would not get tired because there's so many. There's yeah. so many. Um, Is there? What are some that who like who have inspired you, like in your personal life? Ooh, ooh Toby, go for it. No, that was just me going. Like, ooh, I have to think about it. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> well, Got to pass the ball. <laughs> Okay. So I, I have one. Go for it. <clears throat> um, you know, I've told you that um, my cousin died Christmas 2013. Mm -hmm. So a week later, because it's like New Year's Eve, New Year's, I go to a friend's New Year's Eve party. And of course, I'm, you know, fucked up in the head pretty much because, you know, my cousin had just died a year prior. I mean, a, a week prior. So I'm just kind of like, Wow, I'm just going into this year, and it's gonna be a one, and he's not coming into this year. This is so weird. Like it was, it was a weird out of body experience moment. So I was at this party, and my friend is friends with um this guy named um Kevin Barnett. He's uh, or he was he he actually he actually died like a year two years ago which wow. is unfortunate. Yeah, he was young. But um, he he's a comedian. And he also did like writing for TV shows and things like that. He was um, my friend's friend. And also like I knew his brothers from college and things mm -hmm. like that. So I saw him, you know, like on shows like Guy Code. And he knows like, I guess like the comedians in like New York, that kind of circuit. So like when I got, like when I met him, I was like, it was pretty cool. Cause I'm like, he's exactly where I would love to be in life. Mm -hmm. You know, like I could just kind of go wherever I want to go and, you know, write for TV shows and know people, but still kind of be in the background. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I don't like, he was just about to create a show, but he, he unfortunately died. But um, yeah, so I only met him once, but I knew who he was. And it was just like, one of the things he told me was just, cause I was telling him, you know, I wanted to get into comedy and, you know, things like that. And he mm -hmm. was just saying, you know, just go for it, just do it. He was like, you know, I, I ended up, he moved to New York. He was just like, I went to New York. I just moved, I, you know, didn't have anything. So I just went and did it. And that just sort of, inspired me that, that was always something that was just like in the back of my head to just just go and do it just go just do it so you know I've as you know I've done stand-up I've done like improv I've you know just kind of done things just to I guess live so yeah. but yeah no he, he definitely like inspired me hmm. okay okay yeah, no, that's awesome. And yeah. sorry for your loss there as well, having a friend yeah. mm -hmm. pass away, you know, so soon. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I didn't like, I guess it was sad because I didn't like know him, know him, but it was just crazy when I heard that he, he died because I was just like, shit, I wanted to like meet him again, like in New York's like, hey, you know, I made it mm. to you. But, you know, that, that's not right. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I guess I never really like looked up to a lot of celebrities like that. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why it's like, okay, all these people are awesome. Like so much respect for people like Chadwick and everyone else. But mm -hmm. I don't know if I really had like a personal inspiration by some of these people, by people mm -hmm. like even the legends, um, like co comedians like Dave Chappelle or like mm -hmm. artists. Um, it's hard to say. Like, I guess there's people because I was always such an, a nerd growing up in terms of academics. I never really was in as much in the pop culture scene and like um, books and movies as much. But I know, like, I was really big in the academics and I like playing video games a lot. So there were people. They're not black, but they were like some of the video game, like the people who are pretty big in Nintendo. Like, I was always a huge Nintendo nerd growing up. And there's a lot of games I never played, but I did like at least. The, the ecosystem. So a lot of the Japanese, like the people who created some of the most iconic characters, like I knew their names by heart. Um, 
uh, like Shigeru Miyamoto, Masahara Sa Sakurai, um, I think Satoru Masahara Iwata. Sakurai. Masahara Sakurai. Sakurai. No. He made um, Super Smash Bros. Oh, he created okay. the Smash Bros. Series. Um, okay. Miyamoto was the one who created like everything. Yeah. Yeah. Right. He's, I yeah. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, because yeah, Miyamoto was big with like just Mario, Zelda, all the big series. There was another guy whose name I don't remember, but he created Metroid and the Game Boy actually. Um, but he died Iwata? actually. Huh? Iwata, I W A T A Iwata. Well, Iwata was the CEO of Nintendo, who also died like four years ago, I think. Oh. Um, okay. But it, he wasn't the one. There was a guy who died like in the '90s, like shortly after he created the Metroid series. And then mm -hmm. he created the actual Game Boy, the original one. He left Nintendo. He was going to do some independent stuff. And he died like in a traffic accident. And that was really tragic. I remember reading about that maybe eight years ago, but it happened in like the 90s, like or 80s mm -hmm. maybe even. Um, so there's just a lot of those people that I that I were actually like, oh my gosh, they're so like just I just love the I love the culture and I loved like before I even really knew much about anime, that's what kind of drew me to like Japan was the video game. Mm -hmm. Um culture and so like mm -hmm. i definitely had inspiration from them i mean i actually got into my field of computer science because i was thinking of like oh, video game development sounds fun but i quickly <laughs> abandoned that um thankfully i mean no if that's anyone who wants to pursue it but video game development is is brutal um so but it still got me interested in programming doing computer science and all that um i would say that on the academic scene dr freeman a rabowski i think the third um Oh, is this the guy who made Metroid? Satoru Okada. But um, Dr. Freeman A. Rabowski III, he is the president of UMBC, University of Maryland, Baltimore County. That's my alma mater. Um, and it's so young. Like, UMBC is 54 years old, I think, this year. So literally there are people who are in the first graduating class who are still alive, which is not normal for a university since most of them were founded in like the 1800s um, or early 1900s or even 17 something. Um, so UMBC, like the president of um, UMBC, Dr. Freeman Urbowski, he actually was in the Children's March, um, I think in either Birmingham or Atlanta, I forget where it happened, but the Children's March, he was you know, in jail. <laughs> he met Dr. Martin, you know, Martin Luther King. Mm -hmm. um, and he like literally he was probably like a 12 year old boy or something and that's like terrifying to like see the police officers and every, all the stuff happening so you know shortly after mlk died he ended up like having all these like handicaps and like being told that like you're not gonna like get into college you're not gonna do whatever he ended up like graduating college three years with a math degree um he went and got a phd in higher education so and he's also an alpha so he was an alpha phi alpha fraternity and okay he just did all this stuff like he has a ted talk i actually should um post it i have to figure out that i guess i would have to post it um maybe in the youtube chat or something but um if you look up freeman rabowski that's like h r a dowski you know very polish sounding name but he's black and he, he's had a few ted talks about i guess how to transform higher education and the interesting thing about his legacy i mean he's still alive he's still the president but he actually was, because UMBC as a school was founded in 1968, I believe, mm -hmm. um, or 1966. And it was the, the only school, I think, in Maryland that actually was created after desegregation, basically. Um, oh. So it was almost sort of like a social experiment where it's like, they, like other schools that were more, you know, established schools like University of Maryland or Johns Hopkins were schools that actually had to desegregate, you know. To comply with federal law and stuff but umbc didn't so it was kind of like an experiment they're able to do all these things and try to like create these programs that would help lift up minority students and maryland's a very heavily minority sort of state um a lot of black success i mean every state has their success but kevin durant's actually from pg county in maryland um wale is from maryland there's a few different people um from the state and there's just a lot of like black wealth and a lot of educated people in the state so there's like a lot of right for potential so this you know president herbowski just created programs that would help lift up a lot of us and basically um give people more opportunity to do like phds in stem in stem fields um so you know shameless plug to shout out my own university but that's seriously like a guy who 
just you hear him talk and he just has that orator he's just an orator like i just love freeman Rabowski um and everything that he's been able to do and i think like someone else who actually has a bigger profile i, I don't know if i would say she exactly inspired she she's kind of hardcore so she's still her story is very powerful as well but the president of Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute, which is where I was in grad school. And that's in upstate New York. She was the first black woman to get a PhD in theoretical physics from MIT. Mm. Um, and she's the highest paid university president in the country. So she's wow. doing her thing. And she was an advisor. Dr. Rabowski also was an advisor to Obama um, in education. And Dr. Mm. Jackson has been an advisor, I think, since like the 90s, since the Clinton era. She's been an advisor to the presidents. Um, in terms of science and advancement. So these are just like black people in huge positions of power, university presidents, PhDs. And I mean, these people were literally going through the worst. Like I remember Dr. Jackson at MIT, like people just would not sit with her, study with her when she was going through her program because she was black. And that's just how it was back then. Um, I don't remember exactly what year she got her PhD, but it had to have been, um, probably in the 80s or maybe even the 70s um <clears throat> so no like i feel like there's some people like that in the academic sphere people who are like like leaders thinkers who have just been pretty motivating i think robert f smith at one point when he paid off all of the loans of um oh is that is oh my goodness is that his middle name i actually never looked that up <laughs> oh man there you go. that's a yeah, pretty middle name yeah. The more you um, know. The last person I was going to say was just... um, The guy who paid off the... Oh, yeah, Robert F. Smith. Because, I mean, I was like, that would be a great place to be in life. Be a black billionaire or ultra millionaire. And then do something like that where it's like, let me show you why this is good. Like paying off loans and the loans of the parent as well. Or maybe yeah. I'll just start a little UBI trial, Um, you know. There you go. Tie it back into the <laughs> the Yang community, but um, I think like that was pretty inspiring because it's just like you got to push people forward and you got to push. Um, hey, you're good. Yeah, I figured you googled. I would have been super. I would have been like blown away if you knew who Dr. Rabowski <laughs> was, because like if you're in those circles, sure you'll know him, but like that's like a pretty niche area of like higher education advancement, especially for minorities. Um. But yeah, let me right. let me look through some of these. President Manny, as always, go for it. With the the, go for it. you met John Lewis. How have you met all of these people? This Man. is a, <coughs> and that's again that's President Manny for you. So uh -huh. he he got connects like that. All right, he got connect. <laughs> then let's see. Yeah, George Mason University's new president, Gregory Washington, who comes from STEM. Nice. 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 Oh, yeah. I, I, I would think, you know, while, while Toby is scrolling through the comments, the, the one person who I think is successful that's probably inspired me to do a lot of stuff would I will I will probably say um Lecrae. I'll, I'll go with Lecrae. Oh okay. <laughs> so if you guys don't know who Lecrae is, he's he's a um a Christian hip hop artist. Yeah. And he his his story is I wouldn't necessarily say mirror to mine, but but it's almost along that same path. And I remember, you know, kind of listening to him like the first heard I'm like, nah, not feeling him, not feeling him. But the more I got to listening to him and it, it, it kind of like understanding him more about him and, and more about what he's doing and what he's done, I'm like, you know, I can dig that. I could get with that. And in a lot of things, that he said is kind of helped me to push me to be better and do better. It may not necessarily want better to do better, but to get more actively involved in my community and be able to say like, you know, when I'm dead and gone, 
Like people will say, I remember, you know, me and Ron, they were doing this, this, that, and the third. And he pushed me, he pushed me, he pushed me to, to do this, that. And it's like, that's the kind of legacy that I want to leave. But at the same time, it's like, I may not be quote unquote successful, but that legacy that follows up, you know, he did this, he did that, you know, that's it. That That's, that's all, you know, the, the money and stuff. He, he's not super rich and everything else. He's not super famous, but he's touched a lot of people's lives. You know, he, he did a, um, a collab uh, album with um, Zay Tobin. And if, mm. if people know who Zay Tobin is, if you don't know who Zay Tobin is, Zay Tobin was Gucci Man's uh, producer when Gucci Man was coming out. So, like, a lot of the, the mixtapes that Gucci Man dropped, Zay Tobin produced about 90% of them. 90%. And got DJ Elf in here. Mm. And and so when you get people like that in certain areas and, and to be able to kind of like bridge the gap, that's huge to me. I'm like, you know, if, if he can go from where he was at in his in his life to be able to use his platform to touch millions of people around the world mm-hmm. and, and still be true to himself, why not? You know, why not? And, and and I think from for me, that would probably be the, the one goal is like e- even so oh we're not grilled DJ. Yeah, L- oh, we're not, hold on. Yeah. We, were, we were just having a ball, like no, we're not grilled. Hold on. 20, oh, we were out here laughing and everything twenty minutes right. ago. To 10 hold on. In, so I'm kidding. <laughs> No, we were just, we were just, we were just uh, we're kicking back and, and just, just kind of like thinking about like people that that have that are black and successful, how, like how they've inspired us and, and everything else. And I was just sharing my story and whatnot, and nothing grim about it. It's just no. that I'm thinking. And as I'm thinking and just reflect, like it's a lot of reflection, a lot of reflection. And it's just kind of like, just helped me to, to be who I am now. And to be able to kind of like get on this platform and to share some stuff that I wouldn't normally do, I'm willing to do that. So I'm like, I'm cool. Oh, I'm so cool with that. So so DJ Elf, to, to kind of go back, to your your one question, like how do we feel about reparations and, and is Jang in on the topic? Mm. Yang, he's he kind of is in the topic in a weird way. Like I gave him a shout out earlier when I was like, you know, he he's pretty much been helping, inspiring people to kind of run for office a lot more. And and especially like a, we see a, a lot of young um Black people are, are starting to run for offices and everything else. Uh, you've heard of Black Party. Yeah, uh, yeah I heard of that. I didn't look into it yeah. too much. That I looked was, into it. Okay. Go ahead, Toby. <clears throat> no, I was going to say that was one thing at one point I did want to tie into like Black political power. Like That's one thing I figured I don't know if it, it it's an it, it's interesting topic, mm-hmm. but I, I didn't look as much into the actual party. I think I like opened the link. I was trying to figure out, okay, what's this? What, how's this capital going to work? There are already people I saw who like were posting comments about why, like black people who are very pro-black who are posting comments on why it was a bad idea. But everyone has their, yeah. everyone has their sort of opinion on it. Um, I guess because I think some people were saying that this has been tried before for decades. People would try to create some new black party. But like, mm-hmm. I don't know. I have to look more at like the rationale for why certain black people opposed it. But I do think the fact is political capital does have to be sort of just like with, you know, we're trying to create more wealth and entrepreneurship and whatever mm-hmm. in the black community. You mm-hmm. also want to have more political power where it's like exactly. it actually matters that you have to sort of do things that are going to lift up the community and not just know for a fact, quote unquote, that 
you're going to just get the black vote. So at least I think that what he's doing is important from a, it's important to have the conversations on what exactly is like a platform that the black, that black people sort of want nationally. Like, what is it that people, like even when the protests happened in June, it was like, okay, we kind of know we wanted some stuff right now in terms of what's going on in Minneapolis. But then it was like, wait, what, what do we want nationally? Are we trying to get these chokeholds banned? Are we trying to, you know, I mean, there's a lot in criminal justice, but then there's like a lot of other stuff. And this is actually how Melanie Council of the Angle was founded because we literally <laughs> created this account and we posted, like, our, if you go to the Melanie Council of Yang McCoy org Twitter, our print, our pinned tweet is basically, here's a list of things that we should advocate for basically during these protests. And yeah, we advocate for the things like cash bail, getting rid of that, decriminalizing marijuana. We have the $1,000 a month. And that, of course, is going to be very different from what a lot of other mainstream people in the movement are advocating for. So I do think it's important that we as Black people do come together and try to figure out what is it that we're actually trying to like push people to do like in 2022 in 2024, not even just those years, but in the off years when you have really local elections. Like every year you have some local election. Last year, I think in Louisiana, Kentucky, Virginia, and New York, I remember those four states had primaries. Um, so the point is, I think that what Diddy did, like being able to sort of figure out what's our, what power do we have, what demands do we want, mm. is important. So you're not just like rolling up to the booth, like, yep, I guess we're just voting Democrat again. I mean, that's kind of the way a lot of us lean, but we should actually have a real stake in the primaries and right. not just presidential, but at all levels and being able to advocate and sort of negotiate almost like the whole thing of a vote is what are you, what am I getting? What's the transaction? Mm -hmm. um, right, right. So agreed. Agreed. And, and just, <clears throat> excuse me, just to piggyback off, off of what Toby said, I, I did look into what Diddy is trying to do. And, and a lot of things that he's saying, it makes sense. It makes sense. But at the same time, it is that that platform is not solid enough for me to, to kind of bite on, to jump on the bandwagon. It's there, there's not there's nothing in there as far as like actual policies that he wants to implement that's going to help uplift the black community like that's that's big for me that's big i mean i know when i first turned 18 yeah i voted for Barack obama because he was black i'm not gonna lie i did okay i, I didn't read up on none of the policies except for when he fully got into office and then he dropped obamacare that one i looked into i did some research on obamacare i'm like okay like is is better what he's doing now to level the playing field so I can't get insurance versus me going to work, getting hurt. I have no insurance. Therefore, I can't go to the hospital to get the medication that I need or to get the surgery that I need to get back to work to make money. And so, you know, that, that kind of made sense to me. And, you know, there was a lot of other policies that he had besides Obamacare that I felt could have been implemented during his time of office. However, because of the gridlock that was going on in Congress, you know, it slowed a lot of his processes down. And so I'm like, you know, once he got, once that transition to power changed, I'm like, okay, I'm looking for somebody that's going to have some strong policies that I can ride with and vibe with, and depending upon what your policy is, I'm gonna vote for you. I don't care if you're Republican or Democrat, even though yes, I tend to lean more so Democrat than anything else, but if your policies make sense and they sell, I'm with you, you know? And again, this is the reason why I support Yang when he was running for, for president versus anybody else was because of the fact that the man had 150 policies, and out those 150 policies, all of them was literally catered to the black community. It didn't have the, the price tag, oh, black agenda, but if people thought about it and, and again, think hard about what he was saying and, and kind of picture themselves in that, it made sense. It's like, 
Why not? Why not have a thousand dollars just hit my bank account every month in just in case that um you know if I lose my job, at least I still have a roof over my head. At least I still got some money coming in, you know. Mm -hmm. And it just it, it clicks. I'm like, that's genius. Why not? You know, get rid of cash bill again, genius. Decriminalize marijuana. Again, genius. Most states are already doing it as it is anyways. Why not put it on the federal level and just get it done? You know, again, a lot of stuff he said was genius. You know, oh, man, there's a lot. There's a lot. There's a lot that, that Andrew put out that I don't think most candidates that are going to come after him if they don't put out the same kind of quality and content that he had, I don't think a lot of them are going to get those votes. And, mm -hmm. and again, for me, that's going to be the staple. That, that's my rant. I like it. <laughs> yeah, these are some good questions. Y'all have been really good here. Yeah, um, yeah for sure. Like Elle said, as LM said, <laughs> y'all are awesome. Um, <laughs> Yeah, we, we have a brother on. Yeah, that was a great. Oh my gosh, that episode! I need to like share yeah. that episode over and I I haven't actually yeah. watched it. And I need to, but we talked yeah, financial yeah. literacy. Financial mm -hmm. literacy, man, it's so good. And I know Yang Gang yeah. Finance is becoming a big thing. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think actually that might be a good thing to reshare. So Pay, hey, look, um, Roberto has done a lot of the stuff. He's met. He's learned a lot of things the hard way. Um. Mm -hmm. So yeah, but we yeah, we had Roberto on, great guy. Um oh, yeah. He can't wait. I didn't actually really read through all of it. Actually, I keep yeah, don't I know if I read any. I don't know if I read any of them. I, I sound so bad, but there was so much happening at the time, but I remember Obama was really like I remember he tweeted about it. Someone even texted one girl texted me. She was like, "What do you think about it? you can't wait?" I don't remember what I said. I probably was like, "Oh, snap. This seems interesting." Um I think it was supposed to be eight things that can be done sort of now that you don't need a lot of approval for you don't need um you don't need to sort of go through a long process like there are things that may be more regulatory and like commissions you can set up so i mean yeah do what can be done you know i like big change i like incrementalism in terms of if there's something you can do now do it um i like to see everything that can be done it doesn't you know i'm not necessarily a Either or. So if you have eight things that can't wait, yes, let's push that and do the, that that now. That's kind of my idea on it. And at mm -hmm. the same time, you got to think bigger, think harder, and reimagine what you know policing looks like and yes. community. You know, there's just so much stuff. And actually, that's something that I know we're gonna have to address in another episode because Obama recently talked about you lose people with snappy slogans like defund the police and Twitter lost. It's crap. <laughs> so, yeah. um, particularly black Twitter, black activists, um, some elected members of Congress really were like, "Yo, this is not it." So, um, it can't wait is good. Um, there's a whole lot to talk about and unpack <laughs> with all that. But thank you for asking, huh? Yes. Like, yeah. 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 I was just, like I was just looking at it. Can't wait. Let me pull it back up. Um, and it did seem really good. Like, yeah, it was like just eight things that you know, can be done right now. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot of it's just very, very simple. I'll read through it real quick. Oh, so like, share it if you can. Unless you um, got something inappropriate that you don't want us to see then okay. No, not really. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's okay. I'm, I'm not judging I'm not judging this, uh. Oh no. I think I think we're all adults here. I think. Yeah. Or if not we're mature enough to be able to handle that. But hey, you we're never gonna, know. We're gonna have um we're gonna have what do you call it? We're gonna have to have a demon time. <laughs> demon, 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 demon time episode. So demon time, I actually didn't really know what demon time was until I went back like a few months ago. The whole after hour Instagram. Basically <laughs> it's like only fans but tamer. <laughs> so okay. Next episode. <laughs> Uh, next episode, join us on Demon Time at 1 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is going to be going on, Toby? What the hell is going to be going on? I don't know, but oh. whatever's going on at 1 o'clock in the morning, I got my peacekeeping right next to me. I'm going to tell you all that. 
I'm done. <laughs> nah, it's all good. I'm just being a fool. So okay. So what yeah. we got? What we got now? So here's the the eight can't wait. Um, mm -hmm. That approves that together these eight policies can decrease police violence by seventy two percent. So yeah, okay. I mean, right off the bat, they have ban chokeholds and strangleholds, require mm -hmm. de-escalation, require warning before shooting, exhaust all other means before shooting, mm -hmm. duty to intervene, ban shooting at moving vehicles, require use of force continuum. Mm -hmm. Require comprehensive reporting. Mm. Oh, yeah. I like that. Yeah, I mean, especially the comprehensive reporting, because um, one time my brother got arrested because a white man punched him in the face, and they a, a crowd like you know circled around thinking that a fight was going to come out, and then the police just came and arrested my brother and said black man punched white man in the face, so. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. So, you know, just fucked up wow. bullshit like that. Where it's like, yeah, if you actually stopped and spoke for a bit, maybe you could have heard what was going on. <coughs> That's really messed up. Yeah. Like, like the kind of shit that happens. Those little tiny things that, you know, that could be so easily, like, you know, brushed under the rug where it's just like, oh, you know, they're just cops. It's like, no, that just, no. you know, messed up the family you know it's like now he just got freaking arrested for no reason yeah 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 and, and it's sad too because you know a, a lot of this I mean, stuff, of course out now this was just like a yeah one day thing but still you know like it's fucked up yeah. go on sorry yeah no i'm gonna say because it's it's you take that instance you know and depending upon what they charge them as that's gonna be on his record and that's going to be hard for him to, of course, get that expunge and, and everything else. But even in the process of him trying to get that expunge, he's trying to find work. Most most, most places won't hire you depending upon what your felony is. Mm -hmm. Or even if you a felony. Yeah. Or even, even if it's like, you know, something petty, you know, they may not hire you. you you're going to have that that opportunity to not get employed because somebody screwed up on on your record you know right. and that's huge that's super huge like right. i'll use my, i use myself for example like when i got locked up and whatnot you know i was always thinking about like okay i got a misdemeanor like is that going to hinder me from getting employed you know what will that follow me and, and a lot of times, you know, I would put them out, I, I would sit there and I would literally like call the company I'm trying to apply for, like, you know, hey, I got a misdemeanor, but it's it's not, you know, one of these things that you got listed. Do you still want me to put that down or can I check the box? No. You know, and one of those things, and they're kind of like, well, what do you mean? Like, well, I got... Try, it's like it's more so traffic violations per right, se, yeah. but it's a misdemeanor. You know, mm -hmm. do you, do you want me to put that on my application? Yes or no? No, you don't have to worry about it. You know, right. but even still, let's run with the case where they could have said yes, put that down because we want to have record. Now it's like okay, well, what was your misdemeanor? How come you how come you got a misdemeanor for for a traffic violation? Explain mm -hmm. that whole ordeal. And everything else, and that could be the 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 straw that breaks the camel's back. I can't right. get a job, and, and that's yeah. how, right. I want to say that happens to a lot of people. And they may feel some type of way. It's like, well, this guy got a misdemeanor, blah blah blah, and like you know, you're black, so you don't get the benefit of the doubt. Doesn't matter mm -hmm. what the misdemeanor is. You know, it could be the most common misdemeanor in the in the state. Yes. <laughs> so like, it's like, yeah. it's like, oh well, I can't trust this guy, and then you know. A white guy comes in with the same misdemeanor and it's like, oh well it happens, you know. And like and like just that little difference sure, yeah. out of the job and hires this person. Yeah. And like that's and that's the kind of crap that happens constantly. Yeah. Constantly. Yeah. And and here's the killer thing about it too. When when I was going through the whole legal process and whatnot, I I 
literally talked to the police officer who pulled me over. I'm like, dude, listen, this is what's going on. Like, I don't have a whole lot of money to to be forking out. Like, the the last little bit of money I got was to do A, B, C, and D. Do you know of any resources that can help me out just so I can get through and, and get my head above water? You know, and the police officer looked me dead in my face. He said, son, he's like, I understand you're trying to do what you got to do and everything else. He said, unfortunately, I don't know of anything. I don't know of any agency around here that could possibly help you out. I don't. And even if they were, even if they did have some kind of funds to be able to help you out, the, the chances of you getting that, they might be slim to none. You know, and I'm sitting here like, are you serious? Like, I can't, like, I told him, like, I cannot afford it. I can't afford to pay this ticket. And at the same time, I really can't afford to go to jail. Like, I can't. Mm. So it's like, I'm going to need some kind of help to, to kind of, you know, get me through to get me by. And, and again, he was like, man, he was like, I hate to write this ticket for you. He's like, I do. He's like, but he's like, I don't know. And, and he told me, he's like, he, as he's writing a ticket, he's writing a ticket. He's like, I don't know what else to tell you. He was like, you, you can say you can go, you can go to you can go to court, you can fight and everything else. He's like, but at the end of the day, he's like, depending on he said, depending upon what judge you get at that point in time, they may not care. So he's like, so he's like, you're basically out in this cold world on your own. He's like, I'm sorry, I don't know what to tell you. I was like, yeah. wow, like for real, mm -hmm. like. For real, like this is the game we're playing. Where was the like where like you don't have to go oh. into all the details, but were you like at a, a precinct or you're being like like someone to come to you and you basically were in the mid middle of I guess the arrest or I don't know. If I was literally I I I got pulled over. Okay. Got pulled, I got pulled over. So I'm still in my car. My oldest at the time. He was only probably like, what, six, seven, maybe? He's in the back seat. He doesn't know what's going on. Only thing he says uh. is he sees the red and blue lights in, in the background. This police officer walking up talking to my dad. Like, he has no idea what's going on. You know, and and even still, you know, when we moved out here to Michigan, I got all three of my kids now. They're in the back seat. We're, we're, Coming from Grand Rapids, you know, visiting the in-laws, coming back home. It's, it's late. It's like 11, 12 o'clock at night. You know, we're driving. We get pulled over, like, literally right around the corner from my mom's house. Get pulled oh, wow. over. Immediately, my kids, they panic. And they're like, Dad, are you going to get shot? Are oh, you wow. going to die with us in the car? Are they going to pull the guns out of you? I'm like, y'all don't worry about it. Let me handle it. But still, they're fearful of that because oh. of the fact that, They've went, they've they've seen on on TV on social media that you know a black family gets pulled over and it just so happens that the the dad gets a whole clip dumped in him and only thing only thing he haven't done anything wrong he's just letting the officer know like this is what's going on you know and they're just like fearful of that you know I'm like. Right. I'm gonna be okay. Let daddy take care of this. Let daddy handle this and everything else. You know, the officers was cool. They're like, you know, like, you know, where you guys coming from? Like, we're just coming from Grand Rapids, you know. Uh, visiting in-laws. We got the kids in the backseat. My mom is right around the corner of the house, like literally right around the corner. That's where we're going. Like, oh, okay. We we noticed that your place where we're out of state and everything else. So we just wanted to make sure and everything. I was like, oh yeah, I gave him everything else. I'm like, okay, everything's checked. It's like, you know, do you, did you know that your um your tail light is burnt out? I'm like, no, had no idea. Like it, it probably burnt out on the way back home. Like we had no idea. We didn't. Mm -hmm. And so he said, you know, he said, uh, he's like, I see his leg, you got your kids in the back and everything else. They're probably tired and everything else. Like, yes, they're tired and they're scared, pissless. So I'm trying to get them home. You know, like, so you're just going around the corner, like, yeah, like my mom is literally right around the corner. If you just want to follow us to make sure I'm not lying, you're more than welcome to do so. But yeah, she's literally right around the corner. He was like, okay, cool, no big deal. You know, have a good day. You know, make sure you get it fixed. Like, okay, yeah, sure. But still, you know, it, it's that stigma that we kind of got to deal with that many, many other people, they don't have to. You know, right. it, it, it's sad, but you know, it happens. Mm -hmm. It happens. 
Yeah, and you just had to do what you had to do to make sure everybody's safe and your kids safe. Yeah. And- yeah. I mean, oh, ha. I was like, then I was working when I was working in the, in the, in the factory, you know, me and a white guy, we were talking. And <laughs> it's like, well, you know, a lot of people get pulled over that bike because they're doing it illegal. Like, that's not always the case. He's like, well, what do you mean? I'm like, dude, like, I'm always fearful when I see the police officers in my rearview mirror. Always, like when they're walk, when they're driving past, like I'm always watching. Like it doesn't necessarily mean that I've done nothing wrong. Like I have insurance, I have registration, my license is up to date. Like they you can know, make you look I'm like good. you're doing something wrong. That's I'm, fucking terrifying. Like I'm good. Like my car is good. My car is straight. Like I could get the the one goofy officer who just makes a U turn in the middle of the intersection, pulls me over. You know, just because he's having a bad day and now I'm in handcuffs on the side of the road. Then what? You know, I might have people like, oh, what did you do? Like, I did nothing wrong. You right. know, I'm just going home from work. And that's just, that's the day the day I have to live with. It's like, well, I have to deal with that. I'm like, that's because you're not black. Exactly. Like, you're not, you're, you're not black. You don't, you, you won't understand until you become black and you have to go through what I go through on a day-to-day basis. I'm like, it's nothing racist about that. It's just stating the facts that because I'm black, I'm fearful of what's going to happen. I don't know if I leave to go to work and I don't come back home. My Mm -hmm. wife is fearful. My kids are fearful. Like we live in a small hick town, you know, and majority of the population is white folks and the majority of people on the police force is white. Yeah. You know, I mean I've met some cool ones, but it could be that one that that one that that's just gonna be like Yeah, he could have watched what? like a a propaganda fucked up YouTube video yeah. earlier in that day. <laughs> like yeah. it's true. Like it's yeah. true. Oh, man. Again, I got another story. To, I got stories to tell y'all. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. Like literally, I got a meeting. I'm, I'm at my. I'm at a plant. I got a meeting. I'm going to a different. I'm going. I had to go to a different plant. I'm like, okay, cool. And I had just filed to get insurance, registration, and everything. I was like, everything is good on my car. I just mm-hmm. didn't have the the um, the paper insurance in my car at the time, but I had it on my phone. But I didn't trust it, and so. I'm minding my own business. I'm going to where I'm going. And I get pulled over. I'm like, how in the world do I get pulled over? So he pulls he pulls me over. I'm like, okay, like officer, what's going on? He was like, um, this radio played and, and it shows that you don't have insurance. Like, no, I got insurance. It just hasn't kicked in. I'm still waiting on it. I'm like, I got the paperwork, you know. I got I did everything legally online. I'm waiting on the rest of my paperwork so I can go ahead and, and get it done. He said, Oh, it's like, okay. He said, you know, he said, Do you work for Morgan? Like, yeah, like here's my badge. I gave him my badge and everything. Like, I'm just going like literally down the street. I got a meeting. They gotta be in the next five minutes. I can't miss it. He said, Oh, okay. He says, Well, you know, just just be mindful that you know you get your 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 um your your insurance card, you know, in your car and everything else. So this doesn't happen again. I'm like, dude, come on, give me a break. Like, where am I gonna go? I'm on like I'm on the clock. Where I'm going, where else am I gonna go? You know? I hate and, that. I like any like I always yeah. hear like these stories about these cops where they could just never be wrong. Like they have to prove a point, they have to like mm. teach a lesson. And it's like, no, you were just yeah. wrong in this situation. It's not a big deal. Yeah. And, and again, <laughs> you know, my wife, she was like, oh, okay, what's going on? Like, like, and she called me, she's like, you know, I, I said, you got stopped. Like, yeah, you know, I got, you know, St. Joe County pulled me over. And she was like, what does he pull you over? He says that obviously he thinks I don't have insurance. So, like, I don't know why. Like, we just paid for it, like, the night, like, the, what was it? The day before, we had just paid for it. You know, we were still waiting for everything to clear through the bank and everything else. And like I told him, and I told her, and I was texting her and everything else. I'm like, yeah. And she's like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, did he let you go? I'm like, yeah, like everything's good. But even still, it was just, 
that point in time that, you know, as most people say, wrong place, wrong time. Like, no, I'm on the clock. I'm going to work. Mm-hmm. You know? And it, it's it's irritating. To me, it's irritating. It is. And, and so, yeah. to circle back to, again, oh. circling back to, to the eight that can't wait. Again, there's there's a lot of stuff that police officers that they're doing get away with that you know they really shouldn't have or shouldn't do in the first place. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and I and I think that the more voices that we have in our local governments, in our state governments, in our federal governments, that's going to pay out a lot you know and, and if you guys wonder what we're talking about y'all go go look at our other videos where we're, we're talking to people that ran for congress you know some of them won some of them lost but they're saying that you know hey we need more folks in congress that have some kind of um experience that needs to get changed mm-hmm. you know if it if it, it just in particular, we need more black people to run for, for, for Congress, whether it's on a national level, whether it's on a state level, heck, you could you could run for, for a commissioner and, and still make changes there. Like there's so many options and seats available, you know, go for it. And so we're like, okay, cool. You know, that's more so food for thought. But still, it, it's it is just putting that voice out there and be like, you know, hey. We need some changes going on. We're going to use this platform to get it done. Whether y'all want to join us or not, that's on you. But that's what we're doing. And and so, again, circling back to the main topic at hand, faces of Black success, again, that's that's just more than one way to, to, to voice what needs to be done and what needs to be heard and go from and go from there. You know, watch more. Okay. Yeah. So, mm. yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot, but but I I think that this current generation now of black successors that are coming out in in pointing in in, in directions where we need to go. Oh yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> she's running. And don't forget Erica, she's running. We got Jermaine Johnson. He he won his Yeah, he just yeah. Got yeah. Won last week. So he big up to, the, to Jermaine Johnson. Mm-hmm. We got to get people from the state house to the white house. Yes. And yeah, yeah. we were doing that. We were doing it. We have some con- people who got in Congress. I think Washington. Um we, there's a few other um you know, humanity forward, Yang endorsed Congress people. I have to remember because some of the ones who I really knew, they didn't end up winning the races, like some of the really high profile ones. But then there were some that I did know, one really that I knew for a fact. And then mm-hmm. I think there's some others who won different state level um, or local level council type seats. So mm-hmm. it really is that you build the movement at every level, you build mm-hmm. it at every level. So we had rendered, so actually, We had Wendy Hamilton on to talk about mental health. It was an amazing episode. It was, I just feel like I, there was such a good environment and such a good vibe in that episode. And she was just talking about kind of what she's learned in her sort of role and faith Mm -hmm. and, and just, you know, with mental health and all these things, things with burnout and stress. So she was a great person. You know, I think our episode was probably back in like June or July that we talked with her um so it would be wonderful to have her back on um at some point but she's great yeah. definitely looking forward to following the race yes. um seeing what she's going to try to do for dc yes oh she's gonna do she's gonna do numbers oh uh-huh. man yeah she's gonna right. do numbers. Oh, i'm sorry my dog in there she growling <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if y'all can hear her, but she over there girl. Yes, Daisy, I'm talking about you. Oh, yeah, Daisy, dog. Yeah, she, she's 
my my full blooded pit bull. Okay. <laughs> Rescue. She got bullied when she was a puppy, but mm -hmm. but now um, she's a morsel so big baby. No, I'm not playing with you right now. I'm talking. You're being rude, madam. Hmm. You're being rude. And over here, and she's over here. Y'all can't see her on camera, but she got a bone in her mouth. She want me to play with it. Uh, I'm not. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, there, there, there's so many people running for office now that yes, they're going to make a splash. They're going to make a huge splash. Okay. Go lay down. Go. Go lay down. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Yes. <sighs> yes. Yeah, so her, her energy is like, like Toby said, we had her on and her energy is like, oh. It was like, okay, I can sit here and just listen to you. Yeah. All day. So soothing. Yeah, for sure. And I had the light. I think I actually had all my lights off because I was actually still in my office. So mm -hmm. I was in this little booth, like a little phone booth, or it had like one little overhead light. But it was so great because it was like a soundproof booth, little small space. And I was just sitting back and just like letting the words wash over me. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? Since, since we're talking, there's one person I want to try to get on the show, y'all. There's one person. Y'all can, can probably help us get, get her on here. Excited. Hmm. What about Karen Hunter? Oh. <laughs> Ooh. Because she does have a connection to, like, Erica and others. Oh, true. <clears throat> that, what was the topic... I like Karen Hunter. I mean, I don't watch her show regularly at all. I saw the episode where she had Yang on. I saw some clips that she said about various topics regarding the Black Panthers and some other things. And I thought they were interesting. Mm -hmm. um, I have to, I guess, maybe look more at the scope of the conversation. Um, I mean, shoot, it's Karen Hunter. I, she would be a great person to talk to. But in terms of the broader topic, what are you thinking about? I'll put it to like this. There's there's been some things that she's posted that I, I follow her, and there there's a lot of things that she posted. I'm like, okay, Karen, I can ride with that. I can ride with that, and and every so often, it, it surprises the bejesus out of me. But every so often, she either she'll like it, retweet it, or make a response towards it. I'm like, oh, Karen Hunter, like what? Something that like, like you post something. Wait, so what was that? Like you comment on one of her posts and she'll like or retweet it or comment on it? Okay, yeah, cool. Okay. That's what I was. Yeah, I'm like, what? Like, come on. Like, I think come the on. one, I think the one that she did, oh, if you guys haven't followed her, please follow her and please listen to her because she's an excellent voice. Like, a, a lot of stuff that, that she talks about, it's, it's mind provoking. But at the same time, it's so needed. It's so needed. She brings a totally different perspective. Totally different perspective. And Wash Heights, what up? Oh, it's fun. Hey there. Hey. What's up? What's up? And so, I mean, she she brings a totally different perspective, but I love her energy. I love her vibe. And, you know, I've seen the, the, the episode where she had Yang on. Uh, there's another one. There was a, a another. There was a young lady that she had on, like during the middle of the of the protest, and the, the young lady was talk was going off talking about how America broke the, the the social construct or the contract that was made to the African American community, and the reason why black folks are doing a lot of stuff that they're doing now is because of the fact that they're tired, they're frustrated, they're angry, and that each and every time something happens to their community, nobody really pays attention until they start making noise. And then when they start making noise, it's the wrong kind of noise. Like, oh no, you don't need to do that. Oh, she went off. She went off. And so she was on Karen Hunter's show and they were talking and the vibe I got from them, it was like, wow. Because the, the young lady, she made so, she, she didn't make noise, but she made sense. A lot of stuff that she talked about, she said, listen, black folks been going through some stuff for, for, 
for years, years and years. And, and what's been going on is literally the, the tipping point. It is literally the point where all this pent up frustration and anger and bitterness and, and being felt left out and disregarded, it just came to us like enough is enough. You know, it's like it may not be in the ways where, where people like it, but enough is enough. They've had enough. We've had enough. And if the government and, uh, and also other people that are in positions of power, if they're not recognizing that enough is enough, they're going to keep getting the same thing until they realize, like, okay, whatever we're doing is not working and we need to do something different. And so yeah. it was really powerful, really powerful. And, and, and again, a lot of stuff that she talks talks about is really powerful, really thought-provoking. And, and again, like I said, if you guys haven't followed Karen Hunter, follow her. Shout out Karen Hunter. You know, she she's awesome. She's an awesome lady. I love what she posts and everything else. So, you know, it, it's, it's worth it's worth having her on your Twitter timeline if, if you get the chance to do so. So girl, we're almost done. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a good um I haven't really like, I'm pretty sure I do follow her. I just haven't seen her. Like <laughs> the way I use Twitter and the way I use a lot of social media, I'm rarely ever scrolling. I get so sucked mm-hmm. into these apps anyway that I'm kind of like avoiding them at all costs. And when I'm on, I remind myself this is why I don't go on because it just gets so sucked in, but unfortunately, I don't actually see a lot of people that I follow, which is so sad, right? I don't mm-hmm. scroll through my timeline. I don't really see a lot from people I follow um, directly. It's usually maybe it's some people who I have the notifications on for. They'll mm-hmm. tweet something, and then I kind of see who's retweeting it and quote tweeting. But it would be nice to actually like look at people like Karen Hunter and other people's timelines who do say profound or interesting things. Oh, yeah. Um, because I really just don't see like the day to day or even week to week what a lot of people are out here tweeting. So mm-hmm. 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 whole ecosystem. But she's what? Yeah, she's good. Um, I had a lot of respect just from the conversation that I was hearing with Yang and then some of the other stuff that I've seen her post. Um, these are just different thoughts that she's had. Oh yeah, oh yeah, she's amazing. But anyway, again, it, like I say, it's an idea. It's an idea. So we're going to throw that up and wherever it lands, nobody knows. <laughs> we can solicit We can solicit some ideas too from Twitter. Y'all, oh, yeah, you know, get, like what's the chance that we could have XYZ person on? I emoji, question mark. Um, or some kind of like Asian people's opinions. Maybe tag a few people. Um, tag some of these people like Karen Hunter and see. Yeah, she want to. Uh, little channel. Don't yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, yeah, still. We, still. So we, no, we got, sure. yeah, it would be so good to have some people. Um, I'm trying to think. Well, we can brainstorm more, but there's definitely people who oh, are yeah. going to be great people in 2021, especially to talk to. And exactly two months from now, not even exactly two months, less than two months we start Black History Month. And I thought of that last week and I had forgotten that, oh my gosh, it's really coming up so soon. Mm-hmm. So that's gonna have to be pretty big because we started our channel in May. So yeah. we never, we basically didn't have Black History Month. We didn't have the early, we didn't have anything from the beginning of the year. So now we can like, it's four months, it was really like four, <laughs> four weeks <laughs> that you have in February. So, that will be an, an interesting time too. Is what kind of stuff will we focus on in Black History Month? Because our channel is black, so we always talk about black stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, 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 we we got a question here. We got it from Wash Heights. We got a question here. And <clears throat> where's it mm. going to see a new and active discussion on how to find from this? Well, um, I know what I got to say, but okay. Uh, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll start. Um, a good place to see new and active discussions on how to strengthen the greater relationship is places like here on, mm-hmm. you know, smaller YouTube channels and, you know, YouTube channels, especially that are 
geared towards blackness, black culture, black lifestyle, black, you know, slice of life. Um, where you can interact with the chat, you know, you can ask questions, we answer them to the best of our abilities, you know, like, you know, of course, if it's not something like an outrageous, ridiculous question that is, or is something that could just, you know, if you're trying to like pigeonhole us into something weird, <laughs> but, you know, if you're like really trying to learn and understand, um, that's pretty much one of the reasons why we even created this. Mm -hmm. channel to yeah. show that hey you know there's black people in the yang gang and you know we're here yeah our voice yeah. matters yes exactly our voice matters our voice you know we have just as equal footing as, as anyone else and, you know we have mm -hmm. just as good as ideas just as good as thoughts just yeah and you're more than welcome to ask us questions and talk to us however just, just, just be yeah. respectful. That's all we ask. Just be respectful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was going to say mm -hmm. uncomfortable conversations with a black man, which I finally watched that first episode where he sort of took a bunch of questions. So I should explain for those who don't know and the, you know, who are watching Emmanuel Achu. And so he's a football player. I, I didn't really know who he was because I don't follow a lot of these big mm -hmm. names. But he's, um, currently or retired football player and he basically decided once the protest and everything broke loose after George Floyd's death it was like let me use a platform where I can start a series and ask basically qu answer questions that white people have and also he'll ask questions so first he just took a lot of questions from a piece of paper that he basically like got from online some of the questions were like questions like you know I understand the protests I understand reform and change but I just don't understand why there's looting and and uh, riots and like he would answer these questions and really like talk about the uncomfortable questions that there are a lot of people, especially a lot of white people, have about the state of the community and the, the way things have been happening. And so, really important topics that are talked about, um, even things like why can't white people say the n word? Things that are just like okay, basically this is the time to get your questions off. The ones that you've always wanted to ask, but you were too scared to ask. Right, and he exactly. answers, answers a lot of them. And I was like, I, I respect that a lot. Like, that's really important. And that thing got like, I forget how many millions, but maybe like three plus million views. Um, and actually one of the, I saw it like in my timeline on my YouTube um, a few weeks ago, he basically was with some, I think I mentioned it another week too recently, but mm -hmm. he was in the police. He was in this small town that no one really heard of with a police department on his left and right, and as well as like a live studio audience of police officers. So basically he was having these conversations um, with the police. And literally like at one point, the they asked him like, do you get nervous when you're around police? And he was like, heck yeah, like I do. Um, and he also asked the questions to the police, like what do you think when you hear defund the police or, um, stuff like that. So it was really good dialogue, really, really good dialogue to have. Um, and they were honest. They were saying things like some of them were like, actually, they don't mind taking some money and putting it to community programs if it helps relieve the pressure. But some people were also like, they didn't, they just felt like hurt and betrayed. Like, wow, we're here to serve the community. And yet people want to say defund and abolish. So those kind of conversations are so needed. Like, mm -hmm. and it's so hard sometimes to talk about these things and to like, you know, have a place where people can really come and learn. Because um, a lot of times people come in with whatever they believe already or they want to be inflammatory. No one's really trying to look for a solution. And so, you know, Washington Heights, super, super important question. I feel like um, the dis, I mean, that's a good one. I don't know like how the discourse can in increase and what other platforms exist. I know that in 2016 and 2015, it was a hot mess when like a lot of the protests and Black Lives Matter was becoming a thing. and. The Facebook comments I would just see on a lot of these videos where like a police shooting happened or where someone reported on it, you could like, it was like a race war was about to start. Like people, it, it was like a race war was brewing. I was like, holy crap, I've never seen anything like this. Like I literally in 20, it may have been 2014, I think I was a junior or so in college. And I literally like said to my sister and her friend, and they're like four years older than me. Um, or they're like two, two to four years older than me. <clears throat> and I was like, yeah, thankfully we're in a place where racism doesn't really exist anymore. And they were both like, mm, like, I don't know about that. 
And I was like, oh, well, you know. And then like within two years, freaking <laughs> everything blew up. By <laughs> I was like, no, aren't I stupid? <laughs> let, me just, let me just put on the, like the, the I think it was, um, what's the guy's name? Mr. Rogers? Just put on the Mr. Rogers clown mask. Like, okay. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Just into, like a dense cap. <laughs> <laughs> Just put on the like. Oh, uh, look at me! I thought racism was really done. <laughs> no. Um, no. But we definitely need these better conversations because, mm -hmm. again, people. And and also, you have to be willing to listen and be uncomfortable. Like, if you want these relationships, if you want, you know. You know, to to make a better relationship, you have to get uncomfortable. That's the only way to grow. Like you can't grow within your box. You can't grow within your your comforts. You can't. Like you have to get out of your comfort zone in order to grow. Mm -hmm. So you can't have you know you can't have your cake and eat it too. You can't grow and be comfy <laughs> at the same time. Come on. Growing pains, yeah. Yeah. Come so on. if you start feeling that uncomfortable feeling, you're doing something right. When yeah. it, when you start feeling like you want to get out of this conversation when you want to run, when you want to, you know, go back home to some sort of comfort, you're doing it right when you have that feeling. So don't be, a. Um, I don't want to say don't be afraid of the feeling, just like be aware of it um, mm -hmm. and accept it. Like, cause I don't know how that feeling, you know, feels inside you. It could be fearful. I've, I've definitely felt, you know, fearful before going on stage and performing <laughs> i've definitely felt fearful even doing these live streams you know like you know there are times when i'm like i don't want to do this and then i you know i come on and every single time not like i mean i i love you know toby and ronald but you know we sometimes know you too, like, yeah <laughs> you know it's, it's just it's just it's just it's just a normal feeling of just wanting to do the thing you know just normal everyday things and then but you know every time i come on here it's you know i'm happy it's like still like the best day out, out of my week yeah yeah oh. i pre i was gonna say oh, yeah <laughs> um a special place in her heart on tuesday yeah. of course. <laughs> on tuesday, nights. Yeah. tuesday nights i'll take how, it how do we spend out two hours talking and then <laughs> another two hours <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Um, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Let me see. One of um, this is sort of random, but whatever. Like one of the things I really hated about social media and cancel culture and canceling, and you know, people just like. <laughs> like just like attacking just one person because they had like a differing difference of opinion. That's like what ends up shutting people off. And that's what ends up stagnating growth because people are afraid to talk. People are afraid to open their mouths. It's like, no, like you have to express your thoughts because like, I don't know what it's like to be a white person in rural Utah who you know, is probably the only person in their family who's just like, you know, I think black lives do matter. <laughs> you know, it's like, I would like to know more about this, but it's like, you can't express this. So mm -hmm. somebody growing, growing up in that, you know, environment would probably go to the internet and say things. And a lot of the things they're going to say is going to be ignorant. It's going, no. you know, it's going to offend. It's going to be hurtful, but it's like, this is, this is what they know. This is, this is considered the norm to them. So it's like, you just have to have that sort of patience. Mm -hmm. And, you know, <clears throat> and, you know, vice versa as well, because, you know, there's going to be things I'm sure going to come out of my mouth that's going to be a little bit too witty, a little bit too, you know, sharp at the tongue. And it's like, <laughs> oh, it's like, I didn't mean to, you know, offend or make this person feel stupid or make this person feel wrong or anything. It's like, you're not necessarily, you're not wrong. It's just, you know, you just have to understand where you got your thoughts and why they those thoughts aren't necessarily true or you know or right. So that that that's that's just putting it lightly saying listen go back do your research you're wrong here's the reason why you're wrong 
And if you want to come back and have the conversation, we can't do that. Yeah. Right. But... I love Elle. <laughs> 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 oh, I love Elle. I love you. I love you too, Toby. I love you too. I love you guys. Yes, oh. you yes. yes. Let's, and, and just to kind of piggyback off of what Toby and Ellen said, and, and, and again, they're both true, both true, both right. And and I find myself telling not only myself, my mm-hmm. family and everything else, but I tell everybody else, like, listen, like, if you really want to grow and if you really want to understand what's going on in Black America and understand the Black mm-hmm. issues, you're going to have to have those talks with Black folks that are experiencing Black issues, those same issues, because what you see on TV is not is not happening here in the in in reality. It's not. A lot of stuff gets pushed under the rug, and because of the fact more and more people they're not comfortable having these conversations. Excuse me, they're not willing to put in the work to make a change. You know, I, I remember. When I first got hooked up with the uh, the Democratic Party here in my town, you know they're they're all excited because I was this young black guy who came in, but this young black guy that did some research and and then said like, listen, I see what's going on in this town, in the city, in this county, and even though I wasn't born here, I've been raised here, and I see what's going on. It hasn't changed since I was a kid. Like, what have y'all been? doing or versus let me phrase this what have you not been doing to help alleviate this issue to help alleviate this problem you know what are some solutions that you're willing to talk to and talk about in order to get stuff going because at the current rate how things are going you guys are setting up my kids for failure my kids and not only my kids, but you're setting my neighbor's kids, my brother's kids. You're, 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 you're setting them up for failure. I'm not having that. So if we're going to sit down and have this conversation, you're going to get uncomfortable because you may not agree with a lot of the things that I say because you don't you haven't experienced it. But I'm going to tell you what's going on. <coughs> and I'm going to put the ball in your court so... When you start thinking about some stuff, then you start thinking about this conversation, it's going to be like, okay, I get it. Because it's it's there in front of your face. Sometimes you just don't know it. And and sometimes, you know, you ignore it. So rather than keep ignoring it, we're going to put it out there and let you chew on it and if you come back with a solution, let's talk about it. Let's say, let's talk about it. But let's yeah. act civilized and let's get this thing going and let's do the best that we can to provide a better future because I'm not happy with what's going on. I'm not. Mm-mm, not at all. And I won't be happy until things start changing to the point where, like, like Andrew said, when he was debating, like you can look at your kids, it's like your your country loves you, they value, and they want to do the best that they can to protect them. And that's what I want. I'm like, I want to be able to do the same thing. Like, listen, you're good, you're safe, you're protected, and there's nothing here that's going to change that. And as you get older, you're gonna find that that same love, that same compassion, that same group of people that's going to push you to do better, you know, and, and just keep it going and keep moving forward. Oh man, it, it's, yeah. it, and again, like Same. Elle said. All of us, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, and, and like L said too, if, if you want to grow, you have to be, and, and I'm gonna add this in there too. Mm-hmm. You have to be willing to be uncomfortable. You yeah. have to be willing to be uncomfortable. So that's so, and again, that's a conscious effort to say, if I go into this conversation, I know I'm going to be uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. 
But even in the midst of you being uncomfortable, like Elle said, that's where you're going to grow. And that's where you're going to look at yourself and be like, wow, I, I can't believe I sat through that conversation as uncom- as much as I wanted to run away and everything else. I sat there, had this conversation. I'm finding out a lot more about myself and what I can do to help push the community forward. And, and that's it. That That's, that's it. And, and from there, this is going to get flushed or, you know, your cheeks are going to get hot. Your, mm, your heart's going to start pounding. Hot you're gonna, of, you're yeah. going to start feeling like you're an idiot. <laughs> it's like, oh, I must be the dumbest person here. I have to be. <laughs> you're going to start, you know, you're going to start getting self-conscious. That's, that's all normal. Yes. <laughs> Listen, if, if, if people say that they've never seen a black person turn red, I'll tell you. I'll probably be the first person you will see turn red. I will be the no, first. You'll see me turn red too. My nose gets red in the cold. <laughs> People call me oh. red. <laughs> like all oh, this, yeah, it ain't it ain't just black no more. No, it's red. Just like, mm. and, and 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 a lot of times it's, it's because of the fact that there's certain issues that I become passionate about. And I try to not make it into an argument, but put it out there like, you know, this is what's going on. And and even when there's like a debate going on, be because of the fact that I put everything into it and I don't leave nothing on the table. And then when I walk away, I'm like, okay, what did I learn? Mm-hmm. You know, did I get embarrassed? I possibly did. Am I okay with that? Probably not because it's on YouTube, but I don't care. But I can always look back on it and learn from it and see where, what could I do to improve? Where can I be better? And use that as a gauge to do better. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it, it, it happens probably more times than none. It happens. Mm-hmm. For sure. Oh. There's been plenty of live streams. Like afterwards, I'll be like, "Did I say something really bad? You know, is my job gonna find out? I don't know. No. Like my job fucking knows my Twitter. So, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I yeah I just, you just jump on the stream one time. <laughs> yeah, who knows? Like yeah, like you know, like there might be my director might be on. I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> yeah, like I hope not. Oh, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't judge. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's that's funny. <laughs> yeah. like, oh, that was just nerve wracking because it was only like we were only doing like the McCoy thing for maybe like a month, two months. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Probably, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember oh. that. <laughs> oh, great. Oh, wow. That was, I didn't know it was that quick that they found you. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, President Manny, we appreciate you. Yes. Yes. I learned so much from President Manny. Yeah. yeah and engagement. Engagement is big. Engagement oh, yeah. is so big. I mean, I, I've learned a bunch, like just outside of this. But like on Twitter, I poof. I don't learn so much history that probably my history teacher would, would have been like, "Can I sit down at your lap, Manny, and, and learn from what you've been been kick knowledge about?" Because obviously, I didn't cover that. Like, bro, like I didn't know that happened. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. And then what makes it what makes it so funny, or not necessarily funny, what makes it so interesting is that he could pinpoint it on like, let's say somebody's birthday. He'll come around like on 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 your birthday. This is what happened in history, and we're like, "What? That actually happened?" He's like, <laughs> "Awesome! Like, I can't believe that happened on my birthday." You know, and and, and, it, and it makes you feel like he he Manny makes you feel a part of history, whether you mm-hmm. want to be in history or not. He's going to make you feel a part of history, and a <laughs> lot of times, a lot of it is like current events. So, big ups to President Manny. Like, yeah. thank you, sir, for kicking knowledge. No, for sure. on President the street, makes me feel like an American. There you yeah. go. 
<laughs> yes, we're all Americans. All Americans. Mm -hmm. There we go. Oh man, there you go. Oh yeah, then Amy, Stacy, I saw your 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 um, comment that you normally have work, so I appreciate that you're able to join yeah. us this yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. We appreciate it. In Washington Heights, you've been very engaging. Very good questions, everyone here. Okay. But since the two of y'all are names I've seen before, but not all the time, I just wanted to give a shout out. Yeah. And DJ Elf, I remember from the other week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. DJ Elf in the house. Yeah. And then shout out, shout out to my homegirl, Rika. She was on here. And then Manager yeah. Juan, both of them. Manager Juan. Thank y'all for, for stopping by. Again, y'all yeah. are all the more than welcome. And if anybody else that's back there lurking, you know, thank you for watching. Even if you didn't, even if you didn't post anything, but you just sat there and just watched, we appreciate you for just yeah. tuning yeah. in. Like, yeah. y'all have no idea. We appreciate the stew out of y'all. We do. We do. And so, again, yes. Gordo Mofo. Gordo Mofo is another comment. So, mm -hmm. yes, yeah, Gordo Mofo. Yes. Actually, speaking of Twitter, um, let's um if y'all came here from twitter follow us drop your handles we'll follow back off yeah, oh, yeah we'll <laughs> i speak for everyone i guess but we'll follow <laughs> back it's good to engage and you know be on the same network and everything so oh yeah oh, oh perfect. Perfect. yeah what a chord yeah oh. Yes. oh my gosh Dude. that's not even a question <laughs> yeah I know. that does like he just, he just had to say, give me the link. Give me the yeah. link. <laughs> give me the link. <laughs> just drop it, drop it in the middle of the episode. <laughs> yes. Have like, dude, man, yes, at any point in time. And you know what? I, I'll put it to you like this. Stream you are so cool, you really don't even need a computer. You, I can stream this on my phone. Yeah. Mm. It, 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 it'll come out, you know, like no other. There, there's been people we've had on here who streamed on their cell phone through 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 StreamYard and it worked wow. fine. So yeah, yeah. Wash right. Heights works. Wash Heights Pod. Maybe I have seen. Oh. Yeah. Okay. That sounds familiar. Um, oh, let's be in the house. Oh snap! Oh yeah, no Neil, Connecticut. This yeah, O'Neill's a cool dude. Hey. Appreciate you. Appreciate you for coming on. Um, sometimes I don't even know who sees my stuff personally because <laughs> um, we don't really have the access. So, yeah, we were out here just talking about politics and really not, not politics. We were talking about success in the black community and then mm -hmm. politics. And we've just jumped all over police um, reform. We talked about everything. It's been a two hour episode, um, which is kind of becoming the norm nowadays. <laughs> Yeah, appreciate that's you. Appreciate you for coming on and watching. You listen to us. Yes, we appreciate it. And, and Wash Heights, yeah. And, and and what I what I found out is sometimes depending on what kind of phone you have, you know, it, it doesn't necessarily work out the best way. Mm -hmm. And you know, and it's okay. But with, with Streamyard, what they're trying to do is they're 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 trying to venture out as much as possible. Because of the fact they understand that a lot of people they don't have like the high tech um, the super computers, you know. Like, yeah, you know, they, they don't have the, the top notch computers, but like their, their their smartphone, you know, is probably about as good quality as it could get. It, you know, and some some smartphones they they stream in like 1080p, 720p. You know, so it's still like a good quality, mm -hmm. you know, but, but again, it's more so a preference in, in, I, I like StreamYard because they're always alerting me of what's going on, what's the new developments going on, what kind of tweaks they're trying to do and always taking suggestions and, and feedback and listening to their customers and doing right by their customers, which is a plus. So again, you know, they're, 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 a very workable streaming service, especially for stuff like this. Yeah, very workable. Yeah, I've never done streaming before, to be honest. I've never been live. I've never, well, I've been live like on my own social media sometimes, but usually it was just, it was more showcase events. 
I've never really done it personally to talk in this type of format. So that's actually cool. I do remember seeing your thing. Oh, yeah, I remember seeing you post on Snapchat. That was it. And I went and followed your post. I don't think I actually fully watched an episode, but I remember seeing some clips. So I'm definitely have to check out because it would be good for me to support other people. Now that I'm sort of mm -hmm. like in the streaming space, I'm like, oh, this is how it is. You know, it takes that commitment and the weekly yeah, sure. setup and stuff. So I have more appreciation for people like y'all who do have the pods. Um, mm -hmm. Talk about anime, talk about science, STEM. Oh my goodness, there's so many out there that I just <laughs> haven't gotten to check out. Like people who I know personally who've been in some of these fields and it's just like, man, you know. Oh. I guess you got some pearly whites. I'm dead. <laughs> uh, what, dang, what do I use? Um, I use, um, gosh, what do I use? Um, jeez. I forgot. I think, no, wait. I think it's like the total, the total, the Colgate yeah. total. There you go. Mm -hmm. okay. total. That and, and I've been using that for the last three, six months, and it, it's been doing wonders because the toothpaste I used in prior to that, it, it was just regular old Colgate, you know, nothing too fancy. But the the but it, it had like the 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 uh, the fresh the fresh bits in there and whatnot, so. Other than that, yeah, shout out to Colgate Total. Nice. Man, we appreciate you. Look at that. Man, Twitch is in the house. Yeah, Talk Twitch has been actually Twitch. Twitch has been Twitch has been gassing up. <laughs> They've been here with the compliments. <laughs> I never yeah. know what toothpaste I have. Just it's either Colgate or Crest. Usually Colgate, I think, but mm. I, I never remember. He's sensitive. I have sensitive teeth. Uh, <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. We 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 gotta do what we gotta do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Keep our pearly whites, pearly whites. Yeah. So Elle can get like twenty compliments on the screen <laughs> for her for a nice smile. You have to have the nice smile. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Toby. <Yeah. laughs> oh man, yeah. We 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 talk a lot about some different topics and and a lot of times believe it or not is generated by the chat it's yeah. generated by the chat we have our topics that we hit and get done and then the chat y'all come through and, and y'all say some stuff we're like okay that's an interesting topic let's let's talk about that and then here we are some hours later yes yeah O'Neill, can you drop the name of the podcast um i don't remember if you said it I mean, actually, I followed on on Instagram anyway. So if I went and checked your Instagram, I'd probably find the name. But just for everyone here, um, just post it real quick in the thing, and we can take a look. Just because it's nice to support other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, I started watching this anime called Great Pretender on Netflix. Mm. And um, what um, Rika was saying earlier, how, you know, it's cool to see, like, you know, people of color and anime and stuff. Yeah. It's like, mm, mm, like yeah. I just realized like, oh my goodness, I've like never seen that. It would only be like one character. That would be maybe black. <laughs> yeah. Maybe questionably yeah. black. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Like Jay from Cowboy Bebop. I think it's Jet. Jet. <laughs> Everyone just I never saw Cowboy black. Bebop. We claimed oh. it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you know what? I, since since you've made since you mentioned that, I don't know. Have you guys seen Daraira on mm -hmm. um on Netflix Hulu? Mm -hmm. Daraira, not Daraira. Yeah, that's it. Oh. Yeah, that one. I saw like Ooh. two, three episodes years ago, but I never finished it. But I hear it's like okay. a phenomenal anime. So yeah, yeah, it is. Oh, it no, is. It is. It, and so um. The <laughs> uh, what is it? so there's a, a it, later on in the episode there's a there's supposed to be this black guy he's from Russia whatnot 
And when you look at them, we're like, no, that's not what black people look like. Like, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> the Senate. <laughs> Like, I'm pretty sure black folks in Russia, they don't look like that. Like, no, no. I think probably the, the closest I, I've seen, like, a black person that kind of looks black was on, on Sword Art Online. I could tell I, I love anime. I do. Black Bento, uh, I love it. Yeah, no. I do. I've actually been learning Japanese on Duolingo. I, I just started Duolingo. Oh, wow. Days ago. Yes. And it's hard. It's, they want, I'm used to, I guess, speaking it. Cause you know, from watching anime, you hear and you kind yeah. of like, you know, talk it back mm -hmm. and understand some words, but they're, they're teaching you hiragana and katakana, which is their, mm. like their lettering. Yeah. The alphabets. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm just like, I was like doing so a hiragana, then they just throw out katakana at you, I'm like, what? I have to know both? <laughs> oh, see, yeah, like, I've heard Why this. do I need to know this other thing now? <laughs> like, that's so hard. Yes. But it's a lot of fun. Duolingo does Ooh. a good job. I'm yes. learning. Good. Shout out to Duolingo. Like, I literally yeah. learned how to, I know what bento looks like in Hiragana, in Hiragana at least. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 I was going to say, too, on, on Sword Art Online, I think the, the, the one black guy that they actually got that actually looks black is the um, is the uh, the bartender. I, I forget what his name is, but he bald head, nice little thin mustache, got the um, the um, the like 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 a typical black person lips. He has it. He has mm. it. You know, tall, tall muscular and everything else handsome like yeah like okay they they got a black person on there that actually looks black like he he might be the one that on break rolls up a dub and, and, and puffs on it before taking the next customer like yeah <laughs> <laughs> like yeah but but again like they i've seen a lot of of like black anime characters that actually are starting to look black and i'm like Mm -hmm. I can deal with that. Like, I appreciate that. Like, at least y'all trying. At least. Right, right, right. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, like in Great Pretender, there was like this yeah. black character later on named Dorothy, and she she has like more realistic black lips, at least. Not, there, there you go. Not like Mr. Popo Offensive. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's the worst. <laughs> oh, That's the worst. <laughs> oh, shout out to Chocolate Duchess. Man. If any when you guys want to chat anime, we definitely can live and we're Discord. I got a Discord. I got a Discord. Yeah, I have Discord too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say that sounds like a dope idea. Like yeah. I have Discord. I've whew, <laughs> I think I've used Discord really once, and that was to watch it was earlier in COVID. Um Maybe May or June, probably June, because I think it was after the, Lord knows. Um, I think it was after the protest. Anyway, me and my siblings were talking, and I hadn't seen the end game still. So it was a whole year, and what? I had not seen the end game. Um, that, so I, I knew some spoilers. Thankfully, a bunch of things weren't spoiled, though. Um, some things were, whatever. So I used Discord to watch end game. My siblings had all seen it, so they knew, and they kind of wanted to see my reaction. Um, so that was the one time I've ever been on Discord, and it wasn't even like a open stream, just like a video call. But it would be dope, yeah. It would be dope to um, to collab. I'm gonna watch your episodes for real, because I know obviously some of the same friends. So it would be here to cool y'all's perspective on anime. Yes. High key, I've watched probably less. Like when it comes to really watching and reading a lot, I've watched probably not even up to five, really. Um, like in total in your life. You're like there's more than that that I've seen like a few episodes of, but yeah, total in my life, it was sort of the big ones. Naruto, Bleach, not even One Piece. That's like a that's a project <laughs> if I want to get into yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard it. I've heard it's better. Like I've heard it's the best. Jonah, um, Shonen, yeah. whatever you call it. I think Shonen. Shonen. Yeah. So 
it's like one of the best ones. Like this, my friend said it's better. Like he likes Naruto, he likes Bleach. He's like One Piece is like a masterpiece, but you have to be committed. And then Attack on Titan, when it first came out, I saw it. But then yeah, they- I'm gonna catch up on Attack on Titan because the new season just started. I, I, heard I, did. I don't think I watched season three or I didn't finish. I, oh! I am so behind. I don't think I've- so first of all, I was reading it. Like okay. I watched it, it ran, you know, it stopped. We were all like, oh my gosh, what's next? So I started reading it in like 2014, 2015. I literally, I think, stopped reading it like January 2015. So at that point, the anime had no season two. It was still like Yeah, it took a so, bad <laughs> And then this, the anime came out, and I think the anime came out to the point where the newest season, not the one that just dropped, but the, the season before that. I'm pretty sure that that season was a it was after the point where I read, which I'm not gonna like even try to give the context because there's too much that could be revealed. But like, ah, uh, I just remember that like I seen maybe four anime like that I was invested in. Mm -hmm. Um, I get you. Like I never even finished Naruto. I know how it. You know how it ends. Yeah. Yeah, I know how it ends. Um, all I'm gonna say is this maybe after we get done here, I'm watching the first episode of season four. I've been waiting. I, I just seen <laughs> on Attack on Titan, I just seen season one, two, and three. Like my kids, they seen all three seasons. So it's it's like okay, we're just gonna have to watch season four together, or you know, they could get started on it and I'll catch on it later. I don't know, but man. I'm gonna need y'all to, to to go back and watch Attack on Titan. If you gotta see how to start back at season one, do it because <laughs> there's some stuff in there. Yeah. Oh man. Maybe, oh, maybe I want to start all the way over. That's the thing. <laughs> I'm gonna have, have, have to pick back up on like where I where I last stopped. Which you don't have to, but man. Y'all thought season two was good? Season three? Okay, so... I mean, I'm happy that all the episodes are on Hulu, because I was like, man, yeah. like, where do I have to go to watch them? Thank God they're on freaking Hulu. Like, even, like, the most recent episodes are on Hulu, too. Yeah. Mm. And then, also... <clears throat> also, Funimation. If y'all haven't gotten that, get that, too. They got, some, they got some stuff that's not even on Netflix or Hulu. Like, okay. I found and then there's, and then there's Crunchyroll, of course. Yeah, Crunchyroll too. Shout out to them. But man, oh, talk yeah. about anime. We got to yeah. talk about that at, at a different time. Yeah. When I graduated <laughs> college and I had no job, nothing, <laughs> I was just living at home. I was just like, I would just stay on Crunchyroll, just watching random shows. Man, I found Attack on Titan. Like I was just watching this show. I didn't know anybody who was watching this. And turn out the whole entire world was watching this too. <laughs> <laughs> that's, Man, that's crazy. I'm not even like a hipster like that or anything, but it's crazy that when I watched Attack on Titan, it was not even five episodes. I don't think. Like I watched the first few episodes, you know. Um, you sort of find out some of the. I mean, I feel like no one really here is gonna have be spoiled, but I'm still just being careful. So like the first few episodes, a lot of huge things happen, a lot of huge developments by like the fifth or sixth episode. Um, and you have these different types of titans that you find out about, and I was like. By the time I think I finished it, like I, you know, the semester kicked in in 2014, so I wasn't watching it consistently. But then I think Thanksgiving came or Christmas of 2014, and I just watched all of it or 2013, I think. So then I just watched all of it, and I was like, dang, I like watched it with the world versus like a lot of things that I'm used to watching and reading or stuff that people yeah. a long time ago have already seen. Um, yeah. I mean, some of them, some of them were things that were like Naruto and Bleach were. I actually had to wait for the newest episode to come out. But I was, when I started watching these things, there was like 600. I don't remember how many. It was 600 something. 600 maybe 16 or 620. I think 625 episodes of Naruto. Yeah. Or chapters. Chapters, I should say. When I caught up. So I had to like... Anyways, let me... <laughs> this is like sad, maybe impressive. But my first year in college, that summer, I had like a five or six week break. It was pretty long. So I read... I got into Naruto mm -hmm. and I read 400, like 15 chapters. Yes. That's pretty normal. Oh, <laughs> oh God. <laughs> I believe it. 
Because like, each chapter is what, like 16, 17 pages? Yeah, it's like less than 20, so. Yeah, and like, you know, there's like 20 words on each page. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, it's not long. <laughs> so you're probably yeah. reading like 200 words a chapter. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh i missed the just so the discovery and video games and that's another one that we will have to go into because <laughs> i actually got into naruto from playing the ninja storm 2 game so <laughs> i didn't i didn't watch naruto back when it was like popular and i think like 2007 2008 it was literally not till 2012 that some friends in college were playing the game i love the cinematics i just loved the story and now that i like went back and read it i was like holy crap they cut so much out of these games <laughs> but it was still it was good for what it was the oh, graphics yeah. were good the cut scenes the cut like just the interactiveness so that's what got me to think you know what i gotta get into naruto so my brother who was actually into it he was like you should read it and he gave me a few episodes where he was like if you want to watch the episode to see how they visualized it you can but he recommended highly read it i read yeah. it and that's always like I'm not even like a snob of like manga anime, but I have to read. Like I just love like getting that original thing, mm -hmm. and then and then watching whatever I want to watch. Skip spoilers if the I mean not spoilers, um, fillers unless mm -hmm. the fillers are relevant. Um, like some fillers are pretty fun that, that I decided to watch. But then anyway, ugh, oh. anime, video games. <laughs> with, <laughs> listen, I, I'll put it to you like there's the one that I think they need to do a reboot and, and give it a whole heck of a lot more justice is Rosario Vampire. If y'all haven't seen that. I've heard of it. Oh, man. Listen, the anime didn't do the justice that it deserved. I read the manga. <clears throat> oh, man. It was just off. <laughs> Like, man, I, I've read it up to the point where we, when stuff hit the fans and it was all over the place, crap hit the fans and it was all over the place. I'm like, oh, y'all did this so wrong. Mm. Y'all did this so wrong. Oh, man. Oh, because even though, because I think it's on Netflix and Hulu, like, mm. they they got the two seasons on there. The last season of season two, the manga did it so much justice. It it carries on to what happens afterwards. And it's like, man, they need to reboot that one and redo that one and go based upon the manga because the manga itself, it was so it, it was deep, action-packed. But the, the storyline behind it was like, wow. Like, mm. oh yeah. Mm. If they ever if 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 Mario <laughs> the Vampire ever comes back out and, and they finish it off the way how it's supposed to be, I'm watching that. Oh, I'm watching that. Okay. I'm watching that yeah. one. I'll just you know, put that there's somewhere. There's a black anime creator in Japan mm -hmm. who works for Netflix. Oh, yeah, I forget his name though. Like, but there was like this um this this anime uh, documentary on Netflix called like I forget what it's called. But like there was like this this little documentary about anime on Netflix, mm -hmm. and it introduced like this guy who's who's a black man who works at Netflix in like their anime studio. Nice. And I was like, I was like, that's dope. That's really yeah. cool. Yes. Which is funny too because Rika, I don't know if she's still on here, but but she said that um, she had mentioned that because of what Japan is doing, that it, it basically inspired her to kind of like write her own. Hmm. I, I kind of read some of her work, and uh, I, I must say, I like it. Okay. I, I, I I like the direction where she's going with it. I do. I cool. do. <laughs> it, it, it's very original, you know. It, it kind of takes little bits and pieces from from everywhere else, but it's original in, in a way where it makes you feel inside of 
the character inside of the show without you actually being inside the show. I'm like, oh yeah, like when you get done with this and you publish this, like I don't want nothing from it. I just want to be there for the first episode of just like eating popcorn because I'm like that's going to be fire, right? That's, that's going. To be fire. Oh yeah, oh yeah, what? oh my gosh, y'all. Where did the time go? Yeah, this is gonna have to be a record. <laughs> like, <laughs> we keep breaking our we keep so breaking old. our records every week, it seems. So yeah. that's a good one though. O'Neill, definitely gonna hit you on the side. Uh, make sure um Black Bento is right there in the, in yeah. the chat. Okay. Follow I'm it. Follow I'm, gonna, I'm gonna make sure I watch these episodes because I always follow people like podcasts and I'm like I'm gonna watch or listen to watch the episode, listen to it, and then things move fast. So yeah, no, for sure. I'm gonna take the time and make sure I, you know, support and all that, <laughs> and run. Okay. I think. Let me see if there is something else in the chat that. Any mangas or anime you guys are watching currently? Chat. Yeah. Oh, um, since you asked about the Rika, um, I know it was on Twitch. So she was commenting on Twitch. Um, I think she had left by now. So Ron, you're gonna have to. Um, because O'Neill asked if your friend has a Twitter um, or a contact. She has. She has a Twitch. So if you have a like a, a Twitch um account. You can follow her there. It's Reckless Rika on yeah. Twitch. It's up there in the top. Yep. It's way up there at the top. And, and, and she's a, a really cool, down-to-earth, energetic streamer and whatnot. And so I think you'll like her. She, she <laughs> watches a lot of anime. Watches a lot of anime. She reads a lot of anime. I mean, a lot of manga. I'm sorry. She watches a lot of anime, reads a lot of manga. And yeah, like that's just her. And, uh, and and again, like she said, like she said earlier up in the chat, like from watching anime, that's what kind of inspired her to wanted to write her own and, and have a, a cast that's like predominantly black in there and whatnot. So I'm like, cool. Yeah, yeah, you know. And I say go follow her channel and whatnot. All right. Stacy out of here. Thank you, Stacy. Thank Good night, you for Stacey. coming by. Amy Stacy. But yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay, perfect. You stream on Twitch. So that makes it boom. That's perfect. I have a Twitch, but honestly, I only use I I I either had a Twitch for no reason or I got it to like <laughs> because of the whole presidential um race really and nice Thing. Yeah, <laughs> I literally like watch one thing. Like I have the Twitch, but I don't ever use this thing. So oh, um, I can actually, I might do it since you're on YouTube. I'll have to, because I don't usually have the stream open while I'm doing this. So I'm going to go on, or actually, Ron, you can actually do it probably. The Reckless oh. Rika, because I realized Reckless Rika is only going to show up on Twitch. Um, So we have the, the comment chat, the comment bar. But I'm realizing, oh shoot, people aren't gonna see the whole thing. Right. Like if you're on YouTube, you're not gonna see Twitch comments and vice versa. Um, yeah, I'm noticing that. Let's see. So that's actually kind of interesting. So some people are seeing like partial parts of the conversation. Um, right. It's good. It's I'm good. Like, who we're even talking to. Right. <laughs> it's like who's this okay. person? So yeah. Because I got it. Because I got it. I got the channel on Twitch, like right now. So. I'm looking at it. Okay, I just want to make sure I got her name spelled right. Reckless Rika. Yep. Oh, it looks like he found it. Yeah, because yeah. I was going to say also, um, I know one of the links I had in my bio on Instagram was the um, the Twitch. I just have all three, um, which is interesting because, yeah, I guess if you go on to Twitch, you'll see if someone is currently streaming. So mm -hmm. that that works. I'm used to like in the old days when we only streamed to YouTube. So I would always get the exact link for the exact video. But with Twitch and Periscope, you more just have a general link for the yeah. channel, which means you have to, you know, it's not hard, but you see what the current video is. But anyway, I'm glad yeah. that you found 
<clears throat> the person. I'm gonna follow her too. I'm gonna follow. I should follow because I have Twitch, but I never really yeah bothered to I follow really along. Twitch, but I'm thinking exactly. about you know maybe going on yeah. a little more. Yeah. yeah. I mean, because I got it too. So it, it, it's it's just um, it's a totally different world. Which again, we'll have to probably save that for another episode. Because e even on even on Twitch, there's like another community within a community, and uh -huh. yeah, it, it's it's lovely. It's yeah. lovely. Mm. I feel like Twitch is one of those like giant. Um, places you know that people gather that just no one really talks about you know like mm -hmm. every time you hear on the news it's always twitter facebook reddit youtube you know those are like really big things but they never you never really hear about twitch it's like it always like, goes under the yeah. radar and, um, and, and here's the crazy thing about it um should all drop you should all drop your twitch your twitch handles bet i mean i <laughs> handle my instagram twitter Everything handle actually. Yeah, let me um. Actually, I guess I can do this on Twitch. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Um, Ooh. if I actually know, Ronald Drake can. Yep, I gotta represent. I gotta represent Michigan. <laughs> mm. I represent Michigan. So, but yeah, that that's mine, and and whatnot. And, and yeah, I follow, I talk, I chat, and everything else. So yeah, we 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 do this fun. We do this, we do this, and, and again, is it Ronald we, hyphen Gr King or is it just Gr King? Gr King eighty eight. That's okay. for Twitch. That's my Twitch. Oh, was that okay? I thought something was. <laughs> I thought something started playing on my end or something. I was like, Lord have mercy. Um, oh. All right, and I just followed you on Neil too. So that's really cool though. Like I never got into so the funny thing is I gamed a lot when I was younger, but it wasn't hardcore. I just play a lot of the same Nintendo, a lot of Smash Bros. I'm not gonna pretend that I was winning tournaments, but among my more casual friends, me and my brother were really good. Like we would play Smash 4, where you can have up to eight players. Literally, we would have me and my brother versus like not it was it was a free-for-all, but it basically became a me and my brother versus the five or six other people. We would always take them out. And then me and my brother would just fight each other. Because <laughs> like we to do it. We were good. But like at this point, I'm gonna know I'm trash at Smash. So I don't even want to talk myself up too much anymore because I don't play video games like at all anymore. I don't I might have my Wii here in my apartment, but I don't have a TV. Like I'm like the worst young professional. I don't have a TV. I don't really have like a lot of I don't really have game systems like that anymore. But I used to play games all the time. So it's like when I see Twitch, it's so foreign. It's familiar but foreign. Because I used to play this stuff all the time, but I never got to play PC games because I never really had a working, like, powerful computer. But my brother plays a lot of Overwatch and a lot of other um, PC games. So I should ask him if I want some advice on, like, getting back into the scene. But it's cool to see people on Twitch that, like, you know, y'all stream your games and yeah. do all this type of stuff. Um And I actually got, uh, I somehow this weekend, I got inspired randomly to like go back and play video games like that I used to play. Mostly old games like Nintendo 64. Oh, that's the system. That would be really cool to like do a little retro game. Like maybe oh. I'll stream Star Fox 64 or something. <laughs> Look, if we play in 64, we gotta get we gotta get Goldeneye. We gotta get Goldeneye. I played that a few times. <laughs> we gotta get Goldeneye. Never that's owned it. it. But we gotta get Goldeneye. I know it's a classic. <laughs> oh man. That is like the introductory to shooters, Golden Eye, Perfect Dark, Torah. I could start naming them all. Man, yes, Resident Evil. Um, oh, Rainbow Six. Um, Rainbow Six. I'm done. L, we can't hear you. L, we can't hear you. Oh yeah, you're on mute. My bad. Uh -huh. Yeah, I said even the original Smash Brothers, and I was also saying Donkey Kong. Yes. Donkey Kong. That was a good game. Yes. Oh, man. Mario Kart. Space mm -hmm. Pirate. Wait a minute. Star Fox. 
Star yes. Fox. Star Fox was good too. Star they Fox had- 64, I love I can play that game over and over and over <laughs> again. Over and over and over again. I I didn't have that many, so I could actually list the 60 of the games I had. It was like 10 games. We used to have Mario Party, but we actually traded it for Oh uh, shoot, I forgot what game we traded it for. Maybe Star Fox. I remember my pa- my siblings were so mad because I didn't basically tell them. I just went to a friend's house and I guess I brought my game. It was like fifth grade or fourth grade. I brought my game to their house. Um, and they were like, I want your Mario Party game and I'll give you my game. And so I was like, okay. But then when I got home, they were like, what? Why would you do that? Why would you not ask? And I'm the youngest too. So of course, like, I'm really going to get it bad. And my sisters at that time actually used to play games with us. They played Mario Party. That was such a class. Oh my gosh. Mario Party was so fun. Um, I regretted it, giving it away, but I liked, I think, Star Fox or whatever game I got back. Mm-hmm. Mario 64, Zelda Ocarina of Time. Um, Classic. Bomberman 64, I love, that's another game I can play over and over again. Yes. And I never I never played like the other, the classic Bomberman, but Bomberman 64 was that game. I love the boss yeah. battles. Um, I can't remember what the other games were. Oh, Pokemon Stadium 1 and 2. Those so mini fair. games were so classic. I love oh, those yeah. mini games. <clears throat> And I really don't remember what the other games are. <laughs> oh man, you you brought back you brought back arguments. Arguments. Mario, Mario Party. We had arguments over that one. People gonna fight. <laughs> <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yes. We had arguments over that one. Jeez, we got to make that one as, as another episode because y'all just opened up another can of worms. So yeah, we appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna talk about video games. Lego Racer. I remember Lego Racer was another one. Mm-hmm. That was a little fun racing game. Yeah. Um, we never did Mario Kart sixty four, surprisingly. So you... I don't. Oh, then another good one you probably oh. should have tried. The Smash Bros. Was um not 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 only that but um San Francisco Rush. Uh, what there was a racing game, um. I forget what are the, some of those popular. So there's Need for Speed, but there was like some other racing series. Yeah, maybe it was maybe it was San Francisco. It it was San Francisco Rush, and it was Rush 20, 2048. Those are the two big ones that I, that I actually owned and played. And been that one. And um, I actually, look this up. Sheesh, uh, making the paper, making Mega Man Paperboy on Game Boy for the win. Yes. Yes. Yeah, it could, Cruising USA. That was the game. Yes, it did. I, I didn't own it, but I played it a few times. Cruising. Don't forget Cruising World. Cruising World Exotica. Uh, wave. <laughs> wave Racer. Wave. Yes. Racer. I see it. I see yeah. it. I never played it though. Up, oh, up. Oh, I don't found. I found L. I'm about to yeah. follow her. Oh yeah, I'm about to follow her too. <laughs> uh, oh man, this is going to be great. This is going to be awesome. All yeah, right. We, you guys, it's, it's been fun. It's, it's been yeah. a lot of fun. And, and, and giggling and, and shooting the breeze with you guys. Uh, like, this, like the channel. Subscribe. Hit that notification bell. You know, the the, the huge. Mm-hmm. And I know with, with Twitch... Uh, a lot of the, the the videos that we post on Twitch, they don't get saved on there, which is okay, because with us also streaming to YouTube, a lot of those episodes on Twitch, they're also on, on YouTube. So if there's an episode that you would like to see, and you got it Twitch, but if you want to watch it on YouTube, we're on YouTube. We got, a, we got, we got videos. We got videos. And, and so... It's there, and and again, Wash Heights. I understand. I understand completely what you're talking about. Like wanting to stream to three different um, channels, b- besides you know Twitch, uh, YouTube. Like I understand, and the laptop that I'm using now is built for that. So I had help getting it from Yang Gang. Shout out to the Yang Gang. Oh Love yes, that. yes, 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 yes. And it's been amazing. It's been awesome and it's helped it's helped a lot and so yeah some a lot of people say you could get a mediocre one of them like well true but at the same time if you're the main one 
doing all the streaming, especially streaming to three different platforms, you probably want to go up a little bit. And if you're wanting to spend a little bit more to get a little bit bang for your buck, I suggest doing so. And you'll be surprised. You'll you'll probably catch a steal, like for real, a really good, powerful, solid laptop for streaming. You could probably walk out at least under a thousand. At least right. under a thousand. Yeah, easy. So yeah, but that that's it. Uh, any final thoughts? Closing thoughts? No. 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 Okay. Well, chat. <laughs> we love you guys. Thank you guys for for spending some time with us. Almost pushing three hours on this stream. We thank mm -hmm. you guys so much. Come back next week. We got a a really interesting topic. So please come back and, and oh, again, yeah. bring bring oh, your yeah. energy, bring your questions, bring your concerns. Always. Let's have fun. So. We're out of here. Thank you, Washington Heights. I Thank mean, you since, Heights. since you're the last person that said you left. So yeah. appreciate all of y'all, Twitch, everything. We're all going to be connected. And thanks for coming in. There is no channel without the viewers. Bam. Facts. Yeah, absolutely. Facts. That, that's that's, a that's word. facts. That's a word. That's <laughs> facts. I don't care what nobody say. That's facts. Mm -hmm. Yes. Appreciate it. <laughs> all right, y'all. Have a good night. Thanks, we'll catch you